Hey everybody! <laughs> so today we're going to be having a Vroid class where I'm going to try to show you guys what I've done to get myself to this level where I've made this model I have a little bit of fancy doodads going on with my animated textures and whatnot um, so if you want to participate then here's what you need to do come to my Twitter a uh, couple posts down from it you'll find this this video, this promo for what you're watching right now, and here's the links. So you're going to need Vroid because we're going to do a lot of editing there. Um, you can get it on Steam or you can go to their website directly and download it. Uh, you're going to need Unity and just download Unity Hub. <clears throat> It'll help you get everything that you need for Unity. Um, there's this link to GitHub where there are a couple of VRM related packets for Unity we're going to use. And then we're going to use GIMP for all of our image editing. So go to GIMP and get that downloaded. And with that, let's get things started as far as Vroid. So Vroid Studio, since I've got it on Steam, I'm just going to hit it right there is basically a simple 3D avatar editing system. It's got some very basic stuff to it. And we're gonna create a new one. It doesn't matter for the purposes of this tutorial whether you do feminine or masculine. I'm just gonna go with feminine, just because. And it's gonna take a few moments to completely build your avatar from the start. It's, a, it's doing it from scratch. Um, of course, I would suggest anyone that's interested in this program to spend some time diddling around with it, just trying out things, uh, but I'm going to try to stay focused on the very niche stuff about Vroid Studio and leave you to get all of the little like slider bar stuff done. Like all of these, um, for example, with the, the body, you can come through here and go through your body size and hit these sliders and make it bigger. All of that, um, there are a lot of sliders, so there's a lot to do there. But we're not gonna be focused on that because what I wanna do is teach you how to edit textures and how to do some of the more um, difficult things that aren't immediately knowable, like moving a slider. <laughs> um, there is one thing I wanna mention though. Uh, don't be trapped by these slider bars. You can actually come over here and set your own values. So say you wanted to have like gigantic hands for your character, you can come over here and just instead of stopping at one, type five and boom, you got big hands. Uh, same for the other direction. You can go negative with it. If I go, oh, I got to make sure not to do that. <laughs> if you want to go negative, you can hit negative one and then you can have itty bitty little hands. Just a little bitty itty hands. There we go, we go negative five and then you can have no hands. Or just like little finger nubs if they're still even there. <laughs> if you want to. Uh, but that's the only thing I would I'd really say about all the sliders on here. Since we're not going to be bothering with that, um, if you do want to change things, you can change it by changing the value and get more or less than what you're looking for. So I'm going to bring up my little list here of things that I want to go over just to make sure that we're ready to go. So I think the first thing we need to do is have a project folder. So wherever you want to save things on here, let's go to my user folder here. And I've made one called Vroid class. Let's get everything emptied out. Um, you can call it whatever you want to say, like a test character or something like that. And we're going to put it in this folder here. And that's where all of our project files are going to go. Now that we've got that ready, we've got our new base model here. We're going to get familiar with some of the stuff up here. So this is the face editor. You can see there's a whole bunch of presets in here and that's all fine and dandy and stuff, but we're going to be editing our own. You can go down through here again. There's tons of sliders. There's so much customizability that you can do, but the most that what we're going to do today is editing things in GIMP. So to edit something on here, you're going to have to export it out. So what I'm going to do, for example, is come to these irises, just as our first example here, go to custom, and then we don't have any custom options in here. So we're going to hit plus and it's going to make a default eye for us. 
And let's come over here to edit texture in the top right corner. We're gonna grab that. And what we're gonna do is take this default design. Actually, here's what we're gonna do. Turn off all the shaders and everything first. Set everything to white. That way we know all of the colors and everything that we're using on the actual model isn't influenced by any of the other lighting features in Vroid Studio. We're going to take this default design and export it. And we're going to take that into our project file, see how it's going to Vroid class. And I'm going to call this I Iris. Boom. So now if we go back to that folder, my Vroid class, it is now sitting up there and we've got the basis for what our character is going to have for their eyes. And that's the, the gist of the things that you're going to be doing in Vroid is exporting things and then editing them in a different program and then importing them back in. So before we go any further, let's, um, we can continue. Let's save this as a new item because it is something new on here. And we're going to see now that we have this new item here, it's this little colored one here. And then if we ever need to change it again, we just come back and edit texture. But let's get a little bit more familiar with Vroid before we leave here. Mine defaults to documents. Oh, just if, after the first thing you export to, it'll become your new default file. So after the first time you go to your project folder and uh, export to it, it should be the one that it goes to every time after that. Now let's go to the hairstyle tab. Again, you're going to see a lot of presets in here and they can be a lot of fun to just click through and get some ideas on the things you want to do for your character. But we're going to be focusing on doing a whole custom hair set. We'll get to that point eventually. So for right now, I think we'll just leave. We'll go down here to an overall hairstyle and just grab something short for now. <laughs> Nothing too complicated. We'll go to our body editor next. The body editor, of course, is going to be covered in so many sliders, but what we're going to be focusing on is a custom one. So what we're going to do is add a little plus again, come over here to this custom one, edit texture. There we go. And now we've got our default design over here. Whenever you're editing anything inside of Vroid Studio, um, some quick controls to help you out is right click to rotate, click and hold right click to move around, and then middle mouse click to pan. You can also hold shift and left and right click in order to, or shift and left click only, sorry. You can use shift and left click to pan or middle mouse click to pan, and that should help you out. So this is our basic model here. You can see that, shoop, um, let's see, where, where's something visible, the arm over here? See how it's, I just realized I'm probably blocking that. How about this side? <laughs> see how I'm drawing on the arm over there? You can see if we were to zoom in here, that this, we'll shift click and, and move around. You see all the little lines here? This shows where it's going to be on the model. So as you make those adjustments on the slider bars for the body, that's going to be changing the shape of these polygons on here. And it's going to stretch and squish and do a whole bunch of fun stuff with your, your textures. Just keep in mind that uh, whenever you make a change on the slider, it's going to change the texture. So outside of this class, I'm sure you're going to want to make a whole bunch of changes on those slider bars. Just keep in mind that um, <laughs> that it is going to change with the, uh, the stretching of the texture. So. Uh, get all your slider bars done first, get the model how you want it, and then we'll change the textures and you'll probably enjoy that a lot more. Of course, you can't know everything you want to do from the get-go, so expect to have things change as you go. Uh, again, I'm going to change the, slide, the shaders here. Get rid of those. Am I blocking that? I am kind of blocking that. Here, let's move me down a little bit. So right above me there, see those shaders? You're probably going to want those shaders to work whenever you're actually ready to export. But for right now, just to make sure everything looks okay from uh, the modeling point of view, I like to turn them off. 
and then I'll turn them back on whenever I'm ready to see what it looks like with the shaders on. So again, um, we come up here, we do the same thing we did with the eyes. We're going to export and we're going to call this um, body skin. There we go. And now we have our body skin exported. We're going to escape here. We didn't really do anything, but I am going to save this as a new item just so that we've got our, our editable thing there. You also can see this is what my uh, my current outfit is. It's been saved in here. If I were to click it, it's going to apply all of my stuff to this model. But we're going to keep it on this for now. Let's go up to the Outfits tab. So this is where it's applying the shirt and shorts. Um, you can have whatever you want from, of course, the, the presets over here. But we're going to be working on our own custom thing. Um, I'm going to try to make this as gender neutral as possible. So we're going to have a fresh top here. We're going to use a t-shirt. And again, we'll come up to edit texture and we're going to export that. We're basically just filling out all the files that we're going to use. I'm going to turn these shaders off and then we're going to export this and we're just going to call this t-shirt. There we go. And yes, we'll save this as a new item as well. There we go. And then let's go to the bottoms, go to custom, and then let's add some shorts. And there's our shorts. Edit texture once more. Hey bunny, how's it going? Once again, we're gonna turn off the shaders here and export this. And we're going to call this shorts. Pretty simple. There we go. Uh, we will save a new item. Mm -hmm. There we go. There are accessories that you can put on, but in the base, it's only glasses and um, animal ears. I'm not going to bother with that right now, but there are some fun things you can do with that if you excuse me, if you go and download some extra stuff, uh, you can even get like bows and things like that. And then last is the look tab. And in the look tab, you can change your outline, the lighting, the shading, the eye alignment, and some of the physics for your bones. The only thing I'm going to um, suggest that you change right now is the outline. Um, if you like having an outline on your character, if you see right here, there's a very thin pencil line outline, then um, leave it there. I would suggest you keep the hair, face, and body outlines the same, or and accessory if you have them. Try to keep them the same number. I like having a thick outline, so I'm going to put it at, let's do 1.5. You know, and it looks like it scaled up that, that hair, so let's try to make it Oh, that is just way too much. One too much. Way too much. Let's do point two. Yeah, point two is probably good for me. Point two. Point two. Yeah, there we go. So now I've got a little bit of outline on my character. Oh, and I think I missed a thing. I need to come over here to the skin for the face, custom, and make a new custom skin face. So. Go back up to the face tab, come all the way down here to the bottom left where it says skin. Click that. Hey, ID 10. Then you're going to make this custom face and we're going to edit texture. Come down to the shaders. Once again, we're turning that off. And then we're going to export and we're going to call this face skin. There we go. Now we've got basically all the parts we need to make our character. What we're going to do now is open up GIMP and do a little introduction for GIMP now. So go to wherever you installed GIMP and load it up. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll drink some water.
Now this should look almost exactly the same as your first load up. The only thing I have different is I put um, this little tool options tab over on the right instead of over on the left. If you want to do any of the modifications here, just hit this tab and you can add tab over here and it lets you add anything that you want over there or over here. Honestly, it doesn't matter. I'm sure your tools tab over here, um, you can click on that. It looks like a little easel with a, a picture on it. If you want to keep that over there, that's absolutely fine. There's no, no problem with that. I'm just used to it over here. So I came over to this tab. I added tab tools option and now it's over there. We're not going to be using a whole lot of brushes today, so you don't have to worry about that much. Um, all we're really going to need to get familiar with right now is the different selection tools. We have this rectangle select, the ellipse select, our freehand select, and our select by color. These three are really useful for getting all of the shapes and designs that you want to get out of uh, your different textures. And then the last things we're going to use are the airbrush tool and the eraser tool. So whenever you are using tools, uh, there's going to be a couple options over here. Uh, the only ones that we really need to worry about today are opacity, the brush type, and you can see there's like a bunch of built in brushes in here. And then size, which is going to relate to how big of a brush it is. Hardness, which determines how soft the edges of the airbrush is. So with it all the way up, it would be a perfect hard circle if I drew. If it's about halfway down, then it's gonna like fuzz out as it gets close to the edge. And then force is basically how much of the color that you're applying gets applied. Uh, and then same thing for the eraser. The eraser can also choose how much opacity, how much you're removing, size, brush shape, hardness, and force. So let's do our first edit here. What we're gonna do is work on our skin. So let's open up our face skin. File, open, and we're gonna go to our project folder. For me, that is in my user folder here, Vroid class and I'm going to go to face skin. And now you see, oh, what is this? You can't see jack shit. <laughs> well, yeah, it's actually really hard to know where anything on this is. Um, if you notice, you can kind of see the ears over here. You can see the faint outline of the mouth here. So I like to have this up on the side because you can see over here, this is what the face is going to be changing. So this is the only part that matters for the ears. If you look over here, there's like a bunch of blank spot there. It doesn't really help at all. <laughs> it is really difficult to know exactly what you're doing with this. So make sure that you have this up as a reference. And these are the, uh, the backs of the ears. So this is the front of the ear that you see, and this is the back of the ear behind it. So just as our first little edit here, we're not going to do anything crazy with the brushes or selecting. Let's just have a little fun by changing the color of it. So before we make any changes, like anyone should tell you with making modifications to files, just like if you were modding a video game, we're going to try to preserve this base. So if we ever need to refer back to it, we've got it. And how we're going to do that is by manipulating our layers. So over here, you can see we have the layer called face skin. And if we turn this little eyeball off, it makes that layer invisible. So what we're going to do is duplicate this layer. So come up here, hit duplicate. And then this one is the one we're going to edit. So let's rename it. Um, where is rename? I usually just hit F2. You know, we're just going to hit F2. <laughs> and we're going to call this the face edit. Or let's call it base edit because we're going to probably do more than that. Then we can turn this off. It's now invisible and we can do all of our editing over here. So what's this first thing that we're going to do that's really simple? Well, I'm going to show you. We've got some cool tools up here that we can use to our benefit. And the first one we're going to learn about is called hue saturation. 
And what this lets us do is change the hue of the colors on the picture. It's just basically going to shift them to a slightly different color. So right now, we've got this like skin color, kind of pinkish flesh color. And as I go right, it gets more yellowish, then it turns green, and then it goes to blue, and then to purple. And if we go back the other way, it's gonna get more purple, and then back to the blue. So what I want to do is I want to make sort of a, a dragon kind of character for this test. You can do whatever you want. Uh, it's not going to be super detailed because again, we're going to we're going to fly through this. <laughs> but um, you should learn a lot about how to make all the stuff that we're, we're going to you're going to do for being a super detailed avatar. So now that I've got it to this green color I like, we can now change the lightness. Going up here is going to make it super bright and it will kind of wash it out. And on the other end, you can make it super dark. Um, changing these, I'm going to make this a little darker. But you don't want to go too far. Even if you like this, you're going to end up um, washing out a lot of the details on the skin. And I know there isn't a whole lot now, but um, when you use this tool, just be careful not to go too heavy on the lightness bar or else you'll lose some of the contrast there. So I like that. And then I'm gonna pump the saturation up. Because if you, you go super far down, you gray out your picture, it becomes grayscale. Saturation just makes the hue shine a little bit more. So now I'm gonna come up here like that. And now that I've got it how I want, before I hit okay, I'm gonna do myself a little favor for the future here. I'm going to save this as a preset. Now why would I do that? Because the face isn't the only thing we're going to change to this color. We're going to want the skin to match it on the body as well. So we're going to call this the uh, skin color change. And then now in this little preset, we can come down to skin color change and use that in the future. So we're going to hit OK on that. And then what we're going to do next is save our project. This is really important. <laughs> I would hate for you to get deep into your project and then save it or find out that you exported the file, but you never saved the original and you can't go back to it. Because at the end of the day, when you export your, your picture, it's just going to be the finished project. You're not gonna have all the layers saved, all the edits over here. None of that will be part of the picture. The picture will just be the, finest, fin bleh, the finished project. <laughs> so let's come over here. We're going to save as, make sure we're still in the, the right folder here. For me, it's still in the right one. And I'm just gonna call it faceskin.xcf. That's the file for GIMP. We save that. And now our file is saved. So let's export this. And we'll export this as faceskin. Um, I'm gonna make this a dragon character. So I'm just gonna call it faceskin dragon just like that. Export, get a little bar there. And now let's go to our folder and you can see now we have face skin dragon sitting in here. So let's go back to Vroid at this point. And we're gonna go up to this default design, right click on that, just like we did with export, except this time we're gonna import. And we're gonna import the face skin dragon. So now, We've got our green face. Seems all right to me. <laughs> Obviously, we're gonna have to get like eyebrows to match it and all of that good stuff, but everything came in. So now, what do we wanna do to this face? I kinda wanna give my little dragon character some cheek scales right here. Just something nice and quick. So let's come back over here if you're doing something like a fish or even just like a regular character, maybe you want just like a little tattoo or something there. Um, whatever you want it to be, that's fine. What we'll do now is make a new layer and we're gonna call this, um, I'm gonna call it scales, but maybe you'll call it tattoo or something like that. And now this sits over top of our start here. And what I'm going to do is get this color that we've now made. I'm going to use this eyedropper tool here and find out 
where I'm at. So here's the mouth. So that means our eyes are probably around here somewhere. So I'm just going to get a little dropper like that. And now I've got that color captured up here. The scales are going to be a little darker and it looks like they're really far up here on the, the scale. So I'm going to just come down here and we can compare what the color is going to look like. So I want them to be pretty dark. So I'm going to come over here to this side. Uh, if you had a darker skin color, you might want to do something lighter as your, your accent. Whatever works for you. And then how I'm going to do this. So how, how would you imagine scales looking? One could easily do it like this, where you just want to, you know, draw your little spots in here. Just like that. And if you wanted to export that, um, after you've, you've gotten used to things, Control E is export. You can do that really quickly and then come back over to Vroid and import. And there we go. Now we've got a couple spots on there. Pretty neat. Doesn't look that bad, but I think we could do better. So this is the technique I used for creating the scales that you see on my character. What I did was I made the size of this brush really big, opacities all the way up, and what I just did is draw like that. Now you're seeing it's not that smooth. Um, so what I need to do then is make this spacing. We're going to turn this way down. So let's undo that. There we go. That's a lot softer. Now I've just got a big green smudge across the face. That doesn't help a whole lot, right? Well, now what we're going to do is use the eraser. And we're going to be a little bit cool about this. So, you know, you could have done that and got rid of a chunk of it. But like I said before, there's different brushes up here. So if I come up to this brush and I see this one called cells, well, now I've got, oh, uh, I guess I do need to talk about something else. There is dynamics over here. I think for yours, it should still be on dynamics off. But if it's on anything else, just click on that and go to dynamics off for the purpose of this, this demonstration. <laughs> Um, and we're going to increase the size here and we're just going to erase like that. Now look at that. These scales are a lot better looking than the ones that I just made that were simple circles. Uh, in my opinion, at least, uh, of course, if your character wants to have some simple circles, go right ahead. That's fine. A very, uh, a problem I have is getting really busy with my work and <laughs> making things more complicated than it necessarily needs to be. So what we're going to do is just plop that down right there. And then I'm going to go back up here to this brush and I'm going to erase everything around this. And I'm just going to leave that as a little pack of scales there just like that and then i'm going to increase the size and get rid of all of this other stuff here like that and since we put this on a different layer we don't have to worry about accidentally erasing anything down here or accidentally covering up things we don't want but this looks like it's still going to be a little bit weird like for example i'm just going to export this you don't you don't have to necessarily do this part so <laughs> be careful um, and I'm going to import this and see where it is and how it looks. Yeah, I got this up under the eyeball by accident. That's fine. This gives us an opportunity to use the selection tool now. I'm going to come up here, right click on this tool. See this right here? And I'm going to click ellipse select. Nice, ellipse select. And we're just going to draw a big circle over this. And we're going to cut it. So hit Control X. We're going to cut that guy out and then repaste it. What this does is it basically gets all of the parts that we have down here and puts them into a movable um, state. I guess that'd be the best way to put it. Uh, otherwise, you if you just put the selection tool down and try to drag it, it just drags the selection tool, not anything inside of it. You'll also notice over on the right here, it says a floating selection. So this isn't actually on the layer right now. This is on a new layer that's temporarily here until we anchor it again. And if you look at your mouse, 
if you hover over anywhere else other than where your selection is, it's got that little anchor symbol. That tells you if you click here, it's going to anchor this down. So we know we need to move it a little bit. So I'm just going to move this down right there. I'm going to anchor it again, re-export, and see how this looks. Import. That's a lot better. That's kind of where I want these things to be. I'm going to move it a little bit more to the left. So to make that easier, we're just going to hit Control Z to undo that anchoring. I'm going to move it a little bit more to the left. Anchor it, export it. And I think now you're starting to understand how this works. You just do a little bit of change, export it, see how it looks when you import it, and then do it again and keep doing it until you get it right. So with this scale, obviously you've got some hard edges here and it's immediately noticeable that there's some kind of, it just doesn't look good. So how we're going to clean that up, so we're going to come in with our eraser, turn the size way down, and we're just going to get rid of the parts here that have flat edges on the side. All of these ones here that have these little flat sides to them, they just don't look good. So let's get rid of that. Around here, you might have to make a smaller eraser brush for some of these. Try to preserve that giant scale there. Like that. Perfect. Now anyone out there that did like a tattoo or a drawing like that, you could just speckle it in there. There's tons of different brushes in here. Uh, you might have just wanted to put like a star down. I don't know why there's a pepper here, but if you wanted a, a freaking pepper over on them, you go right ahead. Um, you do your thing. Like if I do it with airbrush, boom, you got a pepper on your face. <laughs> I don't know what you would want that for, but it is an option there. Um, there's plenty of things in here to, to play around with. But if you wanted to know how I did my scales, that's pretty much it. So now that we've got this, let's go ahead and export again. And see how this looks on the import. Much better. So now we've got our little face scales in there. Isn't that cool? But we've only got it on one side of our face. Well, we only really need to do any amount of editing on one side of the face because all you have to do is copy and paste it over. Of course, if you don't want to have it be perfectly symmetrical, then you don't have to worry about that. But if I wanted to make this entire layer copy over, I would just copy, paste, and then come down here to layer. And we're going to go to transform and flip horizontally. And now it's been flipped over here. A cool little tip for you is whenever you're moving things around, obviously it could end up being not mirrored very well. Very well. <clears throat> so if you want this to be on the same plane, all you have to do is once you've started to click and hold, press control and it will lock it to that plane. So I can be confident that this is just as far vertical as the other one was. And there we go. Anchor that down. Now it looks like maybe um, I didn't move it as far over as I wanted, so I'm just going to undo that anchoring, move it a little bit further over. Like that. And now I should have symmetrical scales on the face. There we go. Now I think for just, you know, a rough draft, just learning how to do this stuff, that should work just fine. But of course, um, if you have the itch like I do to make lots of constant changes, then you're probably going to want to doodle around with that a lot more. But for right now, I think that looks pretty good. So what we're going to do is save again. <clears throat> you don't want to lose your project file, so make sure you save. I just hit Control S. And now what we're going to do is open up the body. So we're going to go to our body skin. And you can see all of the changes that we're going to have to make here. Now, again, we're, we're just 
trying to breeze through this as quickly as we can, so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. But this follows the same pattern as the face. All of these have their own little wire grid connected to the mesh. Uh, let's exit out of here. Uh, put that thought on hold. We're going to be leaving a place after we've already edited a texture. So once we've done that, it's going to ask us, hey, do you want to save this item before closing? These are all the things in the face that you can change in the editor. We've only changed the skin, so it's got that checked off. If we had changed more things at once here, it would allow us to save that all. Excuse me. It would allow us to save all of that together. So we're going to save this as a new, uh, we're actually going to overwrite. I'm sorry. We're going to overwrite this because we edited the spot. So hit overwrite. And now you can see that custom spot we had before is now this one. And this is our lovely little happy dragon girl <laughs> cheeks with scales on it. So let's go over to body. This is the one that we made. So we're going to edit that texture and open up that editor again. There we go. So see all the little wires here where you can have the 3D shapes form and all of that stuff. This should give you a good idea of where things are going to stretch on your model when you change them. For example, with boobs, if you make them bigger, it's going to stretch all of these little polygons out. If you make your hands bigger, it's going to stretch this part out. If you make your neck thicker, it'll stretch this part out. Same thing with your legs, your feet, all of that down here. That's the bottoms of your feet, the tops of your feet. Um, this is the back of the head. And these are your fingers and fingernail and toenails. All those things that you want to change. So what we're going to do is come over here, zoom out. Come back to GIMP. And we're going to apply that same color change to the skin so that I can match it. So we're going to go back up here, go to hue saturation, and we're going to go to our preset called skin color change. And boom, there we go. So let's go ahead and save this. We're going to save as, we're going to call this body skin XCF. And then we're going to export as, and we'll call this body skin dragon and export. There we go. It's a much bigger file. Oh, I have already made a mistake as part of my tutorial because I was going a little bit too fast. So <clears throat> does anybody remember in the class what I said to do before making any changes? Duplicate layer, <laughs> then turn this one off and we'll call this one the skin, uh, the base edit. There we go. <laughs> that is really important. You want to leave this here for reference in case this gets completely covered up. Um, so we're once again, because we have it set as a preset, that's not a lot of time wasted. We just come back to skin color change. There we go. Now we've got it. We can once again save and export. <laughs> Non-destructive editing over destructive editing. Exactly. You want to make multiple layers here. The only problem with making multiple layers is that after you get like 30 layers on here, the export process can take a little bit extra time. But I promise you that is a, a healthy sacrifice to make to not ruin your project file. <laughs> so. Now that we've exported this color, let's make sure that it matches up. Since we turned off all the shaders and everything, it should be a perfect one-to-one. -one. So now we've got body skin dragon. We hit that and there we go. Now the, the test I look for is, is there any seaming here whenever you go from this neck up to the face? Like you can see, I put some shadow in on my neck and it makes a hard line. Um, that also has to do a lot with the shaders and other things that I have applied. 
So just be careful with that. Um, I, it's not really that big of a problem in this particular spot because um, you don't do a whole lot of this for a lot of time to let people take a look at it, but just keep it in mind. So with that, you now have your matching skin and face color. And if you wanted to do some edits like you did with the, the face, you could. Um, you can just come right in here and plop some of those little dots down or something. So we're looking at the neck right here. If I just came up to my airbrush, um, you know, let's let's do this the opposite way. I'll, uh, I'll put some of this down here. Uh, normal. I've got the dynamics off. Mm, yeah, we'll just hold it down for a second. There we go. That's what it looks like when you don't do the erase method, but we're just going to put this down here just to show you how it looks whenever it comes back out on, over on here. Again, once, you, once you've once um, you exited the class and you have time to edit things on your own, feel free to just go ham, do some crazy stuff with it. Um, I just don't want to overload you with a whole bunch of stuff all at once. Um, so this should show up on the neck. So if we import this, uh, it is actually down here on the chest because I did not go high enough. That's fine. We'll come up here and do this like that <laughs> and export again. Again, it is, it is very difficult to know where you're doing things on the page here because you don't have these little guidelines that you get um, while you're in this editor. So that's why I try to leave this open all the time while I'm editing this so I can get an idea of where these little rules are. In addition to just, you know, the trial and error of putting it in, testing it, taking it out. So there we go. Now we've got like these little, these little rough points in here. That looks all right. So now that we've done a little bit of face editing, um, let me check my list here to make sure I've hit all the points I want to do. Uh, yep, we talked about the brushes, talked about making new layers, the color tab, exposure. Oh, I did not talk about exposure and curves. Okay. Um, one of the other things that I, I mess with a lot on these is the exposure and light curves. So if we come back up to color and go to exposure, you can increase the black level and exposure. Of course, if you turn exposure up and down, it basically just adds a flat amount of black or white, depending on if it's positive or negative. The thing that I would usually mess with much more is the black level. So if you turn that down, it kind of evens things out. And if you turn it up, it makes darkers dark. Uh, usually this helps out a lot whenever you're trying to do shading and stuff. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to hit cancel on that because we're not doing a whole lot with it. But um, whenever you do your own character, if you notice that, uh, say you want to do these kinds of scales and you think it should be a little bit darker in there, that would be the tool you want to use for that. Uh, the other one is curves. It does a similar thing, but it's a bit more nuanced. This shows you, let's put this in the middle here. This shows you how darks and lights are shown on your character. So if I were to take this, actually let's move it here so you can see what's going on here. You can see this is my spot for blacks and it's just down in the corner for blacks. And this is my spot for white, it's up in the very far right corner for whites. If I take this and I move the blacks closer to the whites, oh well, look at that, it's getting super dark. That's because the blacks are basically taking over all the white spots until you hit even with where they're both in the same spot and then nothing exists anymore because everything is the same. <laughs> and then likewise, if we take the white and we have it take up more of the, the picture, then more of the space is going to be covered in white until you reach there, in which case, again, um, now black has overtaken all white and everything is the same, just in the opposite direction. <laughs> so with these, you can kind of move these spots around and try to find a good spot for your contrast. Make your darks a little darker and make your whites a little lighter and you might be able to get what you want. You can also add extra nodes in here. So if you want to make sure this stays the same, you can add a node in and then you can make that curve like that a little bit better. Again, this is a bit advanced, 
but I would tell you that outside of a lot of the other tools and filters, you don't need much more than this in the exposure to get all of your shading right. Um, we may talk about that a bit more. I just wanted to point these out um, in the class as being some of the most useful things whenever you're trying to get shading right. So just mess around with those whenever you have time um, on your own model. Uh, again, we don't really need that for this one though. So what should we do next? Now that we've got this, we're going to exit out and overwrite so that we've got this saved. And then what we're gonna do is the shirt and shorts next. Um, again, it's gonna be pretty simple. If you've already figured it out, we're gonna come over here, edit texture. And now that we have this up, um, once again, double check to make sure those shaders are off. Otherwise, things aren't going to be lined up as well. And let's come down to our shorts. So what kind of shorts would my dragon person want to have? Well, let's see. Let's open. Shorts.png. And now we've got our shorts in here. And you can see where we've got our connections and whatnot. So if we come in here, this is the seam at the bottom and then it connects in the middle and then it comes up top here. The shirt's hanging a little bit over it, but that's fine. All I'm gonna do for this one is I'm going to change the color. Hue saturation. I'm gonna make these a little bit more blue. I want them to be like blue jean shorts. Like that. I'm going to turn the darkness down on it like that and then saturate them a bit more. Just like that. All right, let's get the color a little bit better here. No, that's it's too purple. There we go. That looks pretty good to me. There's a little bit of striation in there. I'm not sure what you would call that, but it's a little bit weird, but we're going to save this as our shorts.xcf and then we're going to export as shorts dragon. Let's see how that looks. Oh no. Guys, I did it again. I freaking did it twice in a row. <laughs> Undo. Duplicate layer. At least I'm catching it now before I've completely saved and exited. <laughs> uh, we're going to rename this as base edit. Disable that. <laughs> and then once again, do this. Turn that saturation up. There we go. I could save this as a preset, but since I'm not going to use it in another one of these, I'm not going to bother with it. You, of course, can save it for yourself. If you want to have a lot of clothing pieces that match color, I would suggest that you do the save preset. But the shorts are going to be the only thing this blue. We're going to do something else with the shirt. So once again, uh, save and export. And now let's import it. Import these shorts. There we go. A little bit funky because of the coloring, but hey, there we go. We got these. Now, they don't exactly look like cloth, do they? Well, that's because it doesn't have the right texture to it. Now, there are a couple things you can do within GIMP for this. Um, you can come down here to Noise and try to put some different kinds of things in here, like um, maybe RGB noise, make it look a little fuzzier there, but that's more like a TV thing. What I'm going to show you is uh, let's just go to the good old Google. So we're gonna go to Google and we're gonna type in um, blue jean texture PNG. And look at this, look at this right here. Jeans texture, that one looks pretty good. I think we could take this We're gonna click on this and make sure that it's not like, you know, not for free to use. Oh, this is like a personal use, this is a learning thing, but if you ever want to make your avatar um, monetizable, <laughs> then uh, you might wanna make sure that you're, you're not using anything 
um, not allowed. Honestly, uh, I'm now realizing that I like DuckDuckGo a lot better for grabbing textures off of things because it doesn't keep sending me through the endless void of different sites to try to grab stuff. Yeah. So what we're going to do is uh, go back to DuckDuckGo and say the same thing here. Because <laughs> that's what I use. There we go. Look at this. Not not as good of what I was looking for, though. <laughs> so, you know, there are the ups and downs. Uh, let's just grab this. We're going to copy image and come over here. Now that doesn't line up at all. What do you do whenever you... Oh, thank you for the follow, Onyx Angel. Oh, and what do you do? I will hydrate. I will do that. Hmm. So we're going to need to scale this down. This this is way out of the area that we need to, uh, to have it in. So we're going to come down here to scale and then make sure this little link is linked. Otherwise, you're going to end up with some really wonky looking aspects on it. So let's just make this down into like uh, 400. It's about half. There we go. But hey looks like this is too long whereas the other one it, it would be wide shouldn't we have it turn around well we can we have a rotate tool um, you can click rotate up here you can go up to layer transform rotate or you can hold shift and R and that will give you a rotate tool so we're just gonna basically rotate this guy perfectly 90 degrees you could do it like that you can come up here Make sure it is exactly at 90 degrees and hit rotate. And there we go. Now we can cover this half of the shorts. Then I'm gonna hit copy, control C, and paste, control V, and just do it again. There we go. So now our base edit is just some denim here. So now we've basically gotten rid of the regular shorts and we've completely covered them up with this denim. Let's see how this looks. Export. And import. Shorts. Now, it's okay, but it's a bit stretched here, don't you think? That's That looks a little bit weird. <laughs> so what you would want to do is try to find a way to cover up that stretching. So knowing that it's somewhere around here, what you could do is try to make a seam, something like a very thin yellow band. Um, because a lot of blue jeans have that kind of like copper threading that goes in there. Or you can make it a little bit darker. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to make it uh, a yellow band. So I'm just gonna grab this my little selection tool here. I have it set to rectangle selection. And then we're going to cover up that seam. Have it stop right at the edge. Let's get it thin so it covers that seam up. And then we're gonna take this color and try to find a good gold for it like that. You know, it's more of like a copper, but... Oh, there we go, that seems about right. And then we can take our airbrush again. Make sure we have it on an actual brush and not like one of those stencils. And then just color that in. There we go. And now we've got something to cover up that seam. Export that. Come over here. Import. Shorts. Uh-oh. Seems as if I have put it somewhere that is nowhere connected to where these shorts are. Which is probably why it looks a little weird. That's fine though. We just learned where these shorts go. So they're a little bit to the right. That's fine. That is fine. So we're going to be a little bit more difficult with this then. Oh, another hydrate. Oh man. Mm. Even more. 
that's a lot of hydration at one time. So you're thinking, oh no, we have to follow this complicated outline to get these things to line up? How am I ever going to do that? Well, it's not actually that bad. Here's what we're going to do. Come down to this layer where we're looking at the shorts. We, we just disabled this whole thing with the denim right now. We're not even going to look at that. What we're instead going to do is just take our selection tool and outline where we're going to have these seams. Just like that. So now that we have this box over top of where the denim short seams are, let's zoom in. And we need to eliminate the edges here. And this is where we're going to use the freehand tool. So with the freehand tool selected, you can make any shape you want. You're just going to click along where you want it to, or you can click and drag if you want. But we need to be special with this because we already have a selection down and we don't want to get rid of this. We don't want to replace it. So how you change selection spaces is using control or shift. Shift is used to add selection space to a selection and control is used to subtract it. So in this case, we have this area selected, but we want to subtract all of this extra stuff around here. So I'm going to hold control and click and that puts our first one down you no longer have to hold control this is now a negative selection space and i'm just going to follow along the edge here like that boop and now we've collected it so you can see this is now where the selection is and this has been removed from it now, I don't know why this happens, but if you immediately try to come over here and select something else, it won't let you. Um, I have to just click on another selection and then come back out and do the same thing over here. Hold control down for a negative select space and then do the same thing. And then we'll just come straight down here like that. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, there we go. So now we've got the edges of the pants here selected. This is a seam. And now let's add some color to it. Now this time, since this is going to be more permanent, I'm going to do a new layer and I'm going to call this the seams layer. And this will sit over top of that layer. Make sure that we're selected on it and we are. And then we'll just take that brush back and do this. There we go. And we'll just brush this in. And now we've got our little golden seam there. Let's go ahead and save. Now, if we exported it like this, you would just see the shorts here with the brown edge on it. Of course, there's nothing to be visible here, so you're not going to see that. So what we need to make sure is that we have this visible and this invisible, and then we'll export it. And this is a very um, unbecoming color to just see with the, the soft edges there, but <laughs> you won't see most of that. Let's import here. Oh no, that is just awful. <laughs> That is the worst possible. So again, we're, we're learning where things are at on here. And uh, one of those things is we need to change this color immediately. Yes, poor dragon, <laughs> indeed. So we're immediately going to change this to a, a much brighter gold color. And we're going to use that hue saturation to do it. Perfect. We're going to increase the lightness. And this is how we're going to save ourselves from having a terrible dragon related <laughs> faux pas. <laughs> there we go. Um, bright yellow is more gold, I guess. Okay. <laughs> but this is part of the process. You just find where things are at and then import them here. There we go. Gold is better. Now why 
If you want to find out where things are, do this. Just, just doodle on here and you can find out where things are. So this right here is in the middle. So I can get rid of that. This is like my little viewfinder for finding where stuff is. So this is the front and this is the back. So if I want to change things in the middle here, I don't want it to actually come any farther than that. So lesson learned there. If I'm trying to make this look like a scene going from front to back, then it needs to stop here, otherwise it's going to go down the sides. So let's control Z, get rid of that. And we'll use this knowledge to come down here and do another edit. So let's grab this little box here. And we're going to now get rid of this whole selection and instead just select this here and delete it. That simple. We can go no pants, that's easier? Absolutely. <laughs> if that's what you want your character to do, go right ahead. And then I'm going to take the same selection whoop, and come up here, grab this new color that we've made, and just touch up this spot right here. Just like that. Oh, seems like I've gone a little bit too far to the right there. That's fine. All right, now we're going to redo this. You could just do Donald Duck. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so now that we've cut that out, this should get rid of this part down here. Import this, and there we go. Now we know that we've got that little scene, but things up here still look really weird from where it's been stretched out. I don't think we can, we might be able to get close enough. There we go. You can see right here, there's this line that it was following and it gets super close. And then over here it gets it gets stretched back out again. So we're gonna have to find a way to make everything look sharp instead of getting this fuzzy edge to it. You could <laughs> oh no. I'm getting portal spammed now. <laughs> So we need to make sure that this is a completely flat and tight edge here. And it looks like this is where our problem might be. So again, let's let's double check. Let's see where this is drawing. And yep, that is exactly it. So right there where it's stretching is where we need to fix. This needs to be a lot harder of an edge. So we're going to make this sharper. So how are we going to make this a sharper curve? Let's again select all of this and then what we're going to do is subtract the part that we don't want so i go oh let's let's be a bit better about explaining things so i took the rectangle select here let's get rid of that take the rectangle select make a new selection for this space and then i came up here and took the eclipse select and I held control to do a negative. So we're going to subtract here. And now boop, I'm going to shape this subtraction space so that I can get the edge I'm looking for. So you can see what's left selected is only the edges of this yellow here that we have left. So if I hit delete, it gets rid of those. And now we can export that and see how it looks. And if it doesn't look right, we can just undo and change the shape of the circle again. So uh, sure, let's undo that. <laughs> Import. Oh, see, now we've gone too far in. You can see right here where this little line is. We've now gone too far. We know too much. We've been too far. That's fine. Like I said, we'll just go redo. Actually, we can just come over here to your redo selection thing and come to our eclipse tool and then hit that again. We're going to go eclipse tool. 
negative. And we know we can't do too much on it. We can't erase too much there. We just need enough to get it close. Try to make it line up on both sides, like that. Let's try deleting that. Re-export. And re-import. A little better, but now we need it further down. So we're going to put it back like that and see if we can get this right. It was too much like this. Let's see how much it was because it's just, just the littlest bit from the stretching. Right? Just the littlest bit from the stretching. You can even see like the, the blue is starting to shine through on that part. So what I'll do instead is just take our circle. Oh, um, if you hit Control Shift A, it gets rid of all selections. So if you, you've got like really funky selections all over the place, then you can hit Control Shift A to get rid of them. And what we're going to do then is make our circle and try to match it up here. Actually, let's do it one side at a time. And then we can just copy and paste it over once we get that right, instead of trying to do both at the same time. Like that. Yeah. Just like that. And now we can make this harder edge get a little bit softer. By taking our rectangle, we're going to do a minus to get rid of that spot. And then come down here, and hopefully that looks a little bit better. Let's we'll see how that looks. I want this to look okay before we, we move on, but we're starting to get into the, uh, the finer details point. I don't want to spend too much time on shorts, because if you're following along, you might have your shorts how you want it. Even if I don't have mine how I want it, um, it just kind of looks unfortunate because of the way things are spread around here. And it would just take a little bit more time to get things exactly how you want. So what we're going to do instead is I'm going to take all of this yellow, I'm going to make it super dark blue, and then we're just going to call that done for now. Because again, this, this is like how the process goes with me, is I just sit here and I try one thing, and I try another, and we just do that over and over again until you get it how you want it to. And I'm worried now that this is going to look like they wet their pants. <laughs> but we'll see how that looks too. <laughs> and that's also the fun of it, is the, the trial and error gets you in a bunch of different directions. But let's see. Awful. Let's just delete that. So if you come over to your layer and you hit delete, you can delete everything off of it. <laughs> And that's also a part of the process, is sometimes you just realize, ah, maybe I did a little bit too much. So we're just going to stop that there, but that, that's the basic principle. You're going to spend a lot of time coming over here, referencing what's on the edge, what's on each of these individual little spaces, and trying to figure out how to manipulate it in the way that works for you. Import here. So with the shirt, we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of just adding a texture or changing the colors on it, we're going to be removing parts of it. So let's exit here, hit overwrite. And I think that was important. I, I'll leave some of that in there for the video whenever I make it, because I think it is important to understand that whenever you're trying things out, you just need to, to test it and uh, go back and forth with it and see if you can make it look right because I just went from having like regular pants to some poo poo pants, <laughs> to some really weird yellow pants, to um, some blue that didn't look right. So, you know, you're, you're just gonna have to, to mess around with it. All right, let's come back up to our tops. This is the shirt that we have made. Let's edit texture. I want this to be a black shirt and I want it to be a tank top instead of a shirt. So how are we gonna do that? Well, let's come back over to GIMP. And we're going to open 
and go to t-shirt and now we've got our t-shirt here now before we do anything let's make sure we do this right duplicate layer come over here and do base edit and now this is what we're going to be editing over here so we've got two shirts the front you can tell it's the front because it's got a little bit of a scoop in the front and this is the back and we're just going to get both of these down to a black shirt we're going to do that by coming up to our color and then we're going to go to the exposure turn that black up and turn the exposure down just like that not too difficult um, this isn't doing a whole lot on this because they're the it's a flat color and whatnot but I turn it up just a little bit to make sure the shadows on the pits stay pretty dark we're gonna hit ok on that now we've pretty much got our black shirt so how do we make this so that it's a tank top well, let's reference here. <laughs> Hold shift, left click to pan. And now we can see basically where we need to cut things off. So if I want this, you can see where it like turns in here for the pits. We're just gonna cut along here and get rid of these sleeves. So let's come back over here to our picture. We're just going to focus on the front for now, and then we'll match up on the back later. And again, we only need to do one side of the shirt because then we can copy and paste over. So let's grab our freehand tool, and let's just hack this shit up. What is it? We're basically taking scissors to our picture here, or to our shirt here. And there we go. We've cut that out, and we've left this alpha spot here. Um, if for some reason, I don't know if your your version of GIMP or whatever um, does this necessarily, uh, if you ever delete this and it fills with the background layer for any reason, all you need to do is come over here and right click and do add alpha channel and it'll make it so that it instead replaces with this empty scene. So let's go ahead and save. We're going to save this as t-shirt. And then we're going to export as t-shirt dragon export and now we'll see how this looks when we import it import t-shirt dragon there we go so ooh, we just tripped onto a problem that's only happened to me since coming to the new vroid if you notice um where the shirt is up here i have no body why is that? Well, they want to make sure that if you have something covering up your chest, um, that it doesn't accidentally draw on um, draw more than it needs to, just to save on CPU space. So the fact that I've made this shirt invisible now lets you see that um, there's actually nothing under here. If you ever need to change this for any reason, come up here to where it says skin mask and see this default design here. Click on that. And you see how all of this is blacked out anywhere that there's black it's going to erase your the next layer underneath of it so since we're on the clothing layer that's going to be the skin um, for the purposes of this I am going to just get rid of that so I'm gonna get a perfect white up here you know it's white because it's all F's get a big brush and we're just gonna doodle our skin back on there we go getting rid of that will do that for you if you do want to make it completely black you could do some some cool stuff like um, get rid of your arm and just have like a floating hand there or likewise um, maybe you don't have a neck maybe if you wanted to be a floating neck person you can just get these parts chopped off like that you know it's pretty cool seeing it that way um, you could also do that in the skin editor too, but if you you notice this, this is a, this is a fun way to do it as well. But I'm going to control Z all of that. And now we've got the start of what's going to be our tank top. Now that that goes really far down and I don't like that. So we're just going to undo that part. Um, and we're also going to do ourselves a little bit of a favor instead of freehand, I'm going to do eclipse. And we're going to do it like 
this. And I'm just gonna chop off the sleeve like that. And see how that looks. Export. And go back to outfit and import. Yeah, that's a lot better. Uh, I think it could be further in. So let's undo again. Use our circle editor like this. And there we go. We'll delete that and try to export that. Now, of course, you don't have to do a tank top. Um, this is just showing you how you can delete clothing and get cutouts that you want. Because you can make it so that this is like little strands or something down here, which, which you know what, we should do that next. Um, now let's also scoop this further down. I like having a really scoopy tank top, if I say so myself. You may not like your tank tops as scooby, but let's see how that looks. Import. Yeah, there we go. Now we can show off those little spots that we had before. And that doesn't look too bad. So now what we're going to do is copy and paste this over. So first thing we'll do, completely delete this half. Um, if you notice at the top, I have the diet uh, would be the like size and property up here you can see it's a little bit more than a thousand it's at this hash so if you zoom in it's going to be right here for the halfway point just like that and that's how you can use these guides to figure out where you need to draw to be at the halfway point perfectly on a model so i'm going to come over here and i'm going to grab all of this and delete it and then we're gonna come over here. Just move this from being on the right side to the left side. Grab that, copy, paste, layer, transform, flip horizontally, just like we did with the scales before. And then we can just move it over, oh, except for some reason I did not have control down and I thought I did, but there we go. And then let's just make sure that it lines up. I'm gonna zoom in a lot more here. Grab, control, and there. Perfect. So now we're going to export that and see how that looks. Import. Nice. So the next thing I want to do is clean up the back side here because obviously that looks a little weird with your t-shirt wings hanging out, right? <laughs> so. We're going to come down here and how are we going to do this? Well, what we could do is grab a very similar circle like this and make it match up with the last one. We had this sticking way out like that. Maybe not that far. Yeah, pretty much like that. And then what we could do is move this selection. So I'm going to click the selection, hold control, and move it up. Please? Please? Pretty, pretty please? Alright, select. I don't know why my my movement here is not letting me move it. It says, okay, so we're gonna do this a little bit more differently. <laughs> On the fly change, we're just going to try to match things up. And it's not gonna be that hard because again, we can just make that go a little higher like this. And these are things you're gonna have to work out. It's part of doing design work. <laughs> design work um sometimes your tools are not going to act in the right way and i can't explain why because it has something to do with the programming and i haven't figured it out so we're going to hit you with one of those then we're going to hit you with an export and see how that looks so this should be on the right side import that should, 
I was a liar. Oh, because it's on the back. And hey, you know what? Kind of nailed it there with the spacing. Um, the bottom needs just a little bit further up. So my circle on that went a little bit too far down, but it looks like the top part pretty much was there. So we're gonna undo, come back to our circle, and just move that up the slightest bit. Delete, export, and take a look at that again. Again, just a little bit further up and then we'll be fine on that. This isn't a detail that I think a lot of people would see, but this is kind of just how the process goes, you know? We won't focus too much more on getting these loops. I'm going to get the other side here and then maybe do a little bit of the neck, but um, this is basically what you do for clothing editing. There we go. That looks fine to me. And now let's make the neck and other side look good. So. Again, we only need to really make one side work for all of this to work. And tank tops usually don't have as low as a back as they do a front. So I'm just gonna do that like that. Try to get those lined up. Delete you, export. Let's see if this matches up here import oh yeah looks pretty good we need to go a little bit wider on the sides but i think that's the depth i want to go for so we'll undo come back here go a little bit further out like that i'm now realizing i probably shouldn't have had music on since i'm going to edit this and i did myself a big disservice there <laughs> oh well hopefully people get over it in the final version <laughs> there we go. A little better. Looks like we need to go just a little bit more on the right, but the left is fine. Now this is the back, so the right should be over here, I think. And let's see how that looks. I was wrong. <laughs> Undo that. Now over here. <laughs> Import. There we go. It's not perfect, but we're not looking for perfect right now. All right, so now let's do the same thing we did before where we're going to get close enough that I can see the hash here for the halfway mark. Zoom out, delete all of that, come over here, copy, paste, layer, transform, flip horizontally, click to grab, press control, slide that bitch on over. Let's zoom in so we can get finer here. Click, press control, slide. There we go. All right, let's export this once more. Come on over here. Import our t-shirt design. There we go. And now we've got a tank top. The last thing I want to show you is how to make it kind of tattered and beat up because all of this looks really clean. Um, the only way I really know how to do that is with the eraser tool and using the little um, shapes that I did before. So let's grab the eraser. We'll come down here and uh, let's grab some of these speckles here and just just do this over and over again. Now, if you want to make it look a little more convincing, um, you could do different brushes and stuff on it. You know, we could make it even better. Just let's just do this is on the back. Let's do it on the front. We'll just say they had like one big tear like this. Let's export that. 
And then when we do that, you should see a little bit of shred right there. There you go. Does it look right? Not really, because, you know, those threads shouldn't be hanging off like that. But if you want to give it that kind of look, all you have to do is go along the edge there and kind of subtract from it. Uh, here, I'll do it with this chalk one. Let's get a little bit bigger. Like that. And then you can just delete like this. Just go along, get your deletions in there. It's, it's not going to look, it looks pretty uniform and you would probably want that random. Hey Robin, be watching. I hope you be watching. <laughs> we'll export that. And then now I should have tatters all the way along the bottom. It's going to look a little weird. Yeah, there's parts hanging off, but it gives it a little bit of dynamic look there. So now we've got our shirt looking right. Let's see. I guess the next thing that we should do is the hair editing process. This one is going to be difficult. So before we leave here, it's going to ask us to overwrite. We're definitely going to overwrite that. Oh, you know what? Since we've already been doing a lot of this other stuff and I did export it, let's just do the eyes real fast. How does that sound? Um, again, let's just open up. Um, we did eye iris. By now you should understand basically how this is going to work if we want to change the color or anything in here. We uh, first start by duplicating this layer and we call this our base edit. And then we can come up here, change the color, the hue saturation. Uh, maybe I want her to have some teal eyes. We'll, we'll make them dark but super saturated with the green. There we go. And if we wanted to be really special, maybe we could take like, um, let's take our eraser tool and let some of the iris or some of the sclera behind it show um, instead of having a pupil. I don't know how that's going to look, honestly. It could look really bad, but I'm just going to do it for the, the sake of science here. <laughs> so let's take this pupil and we're just going to cut this pupil out. Just like that. Oh, look at that. We still have this layer showing. Let's undo that. And now one of our eyes is going to be pupilless, basically. <laughs> Let's see how that looks. Save as, eye iris, and then export as eye iris dragon. There we go. Export. Ah, uh, the pseudo David Bowie. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> And let's see, we will come over here to face again um, and go to irises. This is our iris texture, so we're going to edit texture here. There we go. Import. I iris dragon. There we go. And now it would show whatever we've got behind there. Then we've got these dark green colors and we've got the highlights on it. That looks okay. So again, this is this is what you do for all of these things. You could do it with the eye highlights. You export this layer. You've got these little highlights in here. You can change them. See, I'm doodling on the highlight right now. Uh, same thing with the scleris. So behind the eye right here, you can see where I've got that and you would be able to see behind it. That's pretty neat. Uh, same thing for the eyebrows. If you wanted to change the eyebrow shape, you can just put other shapes in here. You could do some cool stuff like that. And then because it is the eyebrows, it would morph along with the eyes as they change shape there. So if you wanted something like this for your, your dragon girl and have like scales, you might want to put it on the eyebrow layer instead of on the skin layer and that way it can move with the eyebrows. Stuff like that. Um, everything from the eyelids, your eyeliner, all of this stuff you can export and then doodle around with and then re-import it back on and it will become part of your whole um, mesh. Now you can't see the mouth without doing some other changes in the posing editor, but um. You, you can also change your teeth. This is the, the teeth editing part. So if I were to draw on here, you'd see the doodles on the teeth, the tongue, and this is the inside of the mouth. Uh, and your cheeks here. 
This is where you can draw a little bit of blush if you want to. Like that. Uh, obviously, some of the changes that we did to the face on the skin, you could do on any of these to get a different effect out of it whenever you're doing emotions and stuff. Um, I just felt like doing the skin because um, that way I can kind of put all of my changes in one place uh, for the purposes of this uh, class. <laughs> So now with all of that done, uh, sure, we'll overwrite that even though I deleted all those things. Okay, they'll be saved as new items. Thank you. I appreciate that, Vroid. And let's head on over to the hairstyle. So for all of the hair, I like to do all of my hair in the overall hairstyle section. You can use all of these different sections to better separate things out uh, for organization. But what I do is for my hair, I do it all on overall hair. And then when I use the hairbrush for other things, which we'll get into, um, then I use different sections for that to keep them separated. So first things first, let's go back to the overall hair and set this to minus. You now have this base hair thing as the only thing showing. Um, I don't usually edit this texture much. Again, you can. Um, you can come in here and see this is this is the back of the head. Um, this is near the top right here. So if you want to edit this, you can. I usually just change the color because um, by the end of it, it's usually completely covered up. But if you do want to have some of the, the bottom hair, you can do the same thing as before. Export this design, touch it up, change this how you want it to look and then have it applied to your character. Um, but that will not be part of today's class. So we're exiting this, we're gonna close without saving, and I'm just gonna change that color. So what color do I want my base hair to be? I'm gonna use this. Let's come over to my hair color, uh, and let's do, let's do blue. How about a blue? There we go. Just like that. And we'll have that set first. And then what I'm gonna do is come over here to this and copy that color. Now let's go back to overall hair. Once you're done getting this how you want it to, um, knowing that it's just there if, here I'll try to turn my head in a way. If the hair ever becomes visible, uh, it just makes sure that there isn't like a blank spot there or it's just more skin. It looks more natural if there's something underneath. Come back to overall hair, go to custom, and then this makes a wire mesh. You know what, let's delete this and make a new custom. That way, um, start without it saving. This way we have a, a completely fresh one. So we're gonna come over here. We're gonna set our main color, boop, to that blue color. Hit enter on that. And then for the highlight color, um, I'm going to also boop that in there. And then we can change that layer. Now I didn't update this immediately, but um, I think once we come out and back in it will. So edit. Now that we've got a new hairstyle set, it's got a freehand group over here freehand guides and procedural guides. Let's click on freehand group one and you can see we've got two different materials up here and a whole bunch of parameters and now our character has this cage on their head. What the heck's up with that? Mm. Water. <laughs> so this is basically what we're going to be drawing on to make the hair. So before we do anything, let's make sure we've got the right material for our hair. Let's drop this down and you can see, oh, hey, look, that main highlight color has been, has been put in there. And we also have another texture here. So this is what the hair texture looks like over here on the right. Uh, we've also got highlight colors over here, shader colors. We're just gonna turn everything off again. Hair group bumpiness, we'll just leave that out of one. And then our highlights, we'll leave that as default. All of this I'm going to leave default for now. We are going to do some kind of editing in here, but um, for the most part, let's just leave this as is for hair so that it still kind of looks like hair for the moment. <laughs> uh, but what we will do, exit, 
is change the color of this material. So again, this main color, I'm gonna come up here and hit it with that. So I'm using the same one. And then our highlight color, we're gonna leave that off. So what do we do with all of these things? These are the texture parameters. So that hair texture that I just had up over here, if we were to draw, you know, let's just draw one right now. I'll take this brush and draw this in. Um, for some reason it's brown still. Why are you still brown? Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, sir. Is there a reason you are still brown, sir? Is there something that I forgot to do? Probably. Ah, I'm using this material instead for some reason. All right, that's fine. We'll, we'll go to the top material here. Delete this hair. We're just gonna hit that with a delete. Bye-bye. Come to freehand group, brush. I'm gonna see if I hit this and then come down here. Ah, so it is same parts of two different materials. That's why. Um, when I imported my character, I didn't have this, so I apologize for that. I'll probably edit this out. <laughs> um, but here we go. Main color. We'll do the same thing. Give it that blue. Let's also do the highlight color. We'll give it that blue, but we'll be a little lighter. And now we'll brush. And hey, there we go. Look at that. So you can see this is what that that texture looked like on the other picture or on the the bleh. yeah, this is what the texture looked like. But how do we make this how we want it to? Well, this is going to basically change the brush stuff. So if I make this bigger and I brush now, it's going to make that a lot stretched out. If I make it smaller, it's gonna make it a lot thinner. So if you want it to seem like you have a bunch of really thin hairs, then you're gonna want your texture parameter to be a lot smaller. If you want it to look like big chunks of hair, then you're gonna want that to be bigger. Um, personally, I like to leave it right at one and just keep it there um, for the hair. I think it does a good job of doing that. But obviously, if you end up changing any of your hair texture, you might want to, um, you know, doodle around with that and see what works for you. Um, also, here, we'll get rid of these ones here since they are the offshoots. If you change the position of the highlights, oop, that one doesn't have any. So I'm going to get rid of that this freehand group and then let's do highlight position and we'll put it all the way up uh oh there we go so now the highlight is a little bit further up on the brush we'll just leave that the same offset um that is going to be how far along the the texture is so let's see if I do this freehand group with everything the same, you're going to see that the brush pretty much comes out looking the same each time. Just like that. That looks a little bit weird. So what we're going to do is do a little bit of offset this time. Ah, and now it's got the, the texture starting on one side more than the other. And then we can come over here like that. And it just basically rotates the texture around the strand of hair. That way you can get a little bit of difference in there. So we're going to undo all of those and go down here to the hair parameters itself. Um, I'm actually going to start from the bottom on this one instead of doing this stuff first. That's because this determines a lot about your shape before anything else. What this little curve shows you Let's make sure I'm not covering it up with anything first before I go any further. Yep. So right here at the very bottom, um, at the very far left side, 
is how thick the hair is at the start of the strand and over on the right is how thick it is at the end. So this one, if you can see, starts out a little bit thinner, then it gets a lot wider and then it tapers down to a point. If you wanted to make, say, a flat piece of hair in the back, what you might do, uh, and you can right click to get rid of extra things on here and left click to add them in, is just leave it all the way up like this or leave it a flat line at least. And then when you draw, you have a flat piece of hair. And that way at the bottom, if you want it to be flat, it can. Or if you want to do, say, like a straight piece of hair, you can come down like that and you can start pretty thin and just leave it thin like that. And that's how you can do bangs and stuff like that is leave it thin. Uh, obviously, you could do some really weird stuff, like have it start super thin and get really wide. Um, not sure what you would use it for, but um, I'm sure there's characters out there that would use it. Or if you want to get really weird, you can have it go in different thicknesses as it goes along. Like this. And get this kind of hourglass shape. On top of how you would shape the hair using this thing, you can also get other shapes on the 3D part of it. So right now we're using diamond. Um, if you look, actually I'm going to change the shape here for this. I'll explain this part later, but this is just to show you. If you look at this, head on, you can see it points up. It's because it's the diamond shape. We've got like this little poly polygonal shape right here. If you wanted to draw something that was not as heavy on resources, you can make it completely flat. You could make it a bottomless triangle, so it's basically just got a bend in it. A triangle, oh, triangle, and then that puts a flat bottom onto the hair, or the diamond, which is all around. So using different shapes, you can um, better represent what your character needs. So for doing things like on the back of the head, you probably only need to use a flat for your brush. And then you could just draw that on and keep it flat. And then for the front, you would probably want more like the diamonds and the triangles so that if the hair and its movement ever flips around, it doesn't show like that it's a completely flat thing. It, it's still got a little bit of depth to it. All right, so with that, let's get rid of these. And now that we know a little bit about this, um, oh, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead again. Um, so now that we've got this part down, we got a couple more parameters here. Width, so this doesn't change anything down here, it just scales it up even more. So by turning the width way up, god damn it, use this material, delete. <laughs> With the width way up, you're going to get a um, more scaled up version of that hair, so it's going to be a lot bigger. And if you turn it down, it'll also be scaled way down. Uh, so it's just another parameter along with this you can do to get the right shape for your hair. Um, likewise, let's just put that back up to uh, 0 0.05, I think it was, right there in the middle. Thickness, if you turn that way up. Um, for a diamond or triangle shaped hair, it's going to make it poof out a lot more. So that bend on the angle is going to be a lot more noticeable with it. So if you look at the hair I have on my character right now, you can see near the top, the, the strands of hair on that layer have way more thickness to them so that they look a little bit more poofy. Uh, gives them more volume, I guess I would say. Uh, and then down here you can do twist. If you want to add a little twist to your hair like that, you can get it twisty. Uh, and then the twist placement will change where the twist is most applied. So if you want it to be twisty near the top and not the bottom, you can do a negative, or if you want it more twisty near the bottom, you give it a positive. And then how much twistness there. Smoothness determines how many polygons are used to make the hair. So if you have it turned way down, it's and you especially if you have a lot of twist to it, it looks super funky. Yeah, look at that. That 
it just does not look right. Obviously, turning the smoothness way up makes it look better, but then you're going to be using more processing power in the process of it. So keep that in mind. Okay, so with all of that, how do I want my hair to look for my character? Well, I love curly hair, but um, let's, let's try to not just repeat what I did with my own hair. <laughs> Although maybe that would be good. Maybe people would want to do that. So what I'm going to do here, go up to selection. And while you're on this freehand group, make sure you're on the right material, is set your hair up where you want it. So for my first layer, it wants to be somewhere right under the hair. And again, um, maybe not again. Before you start working on hair, my tip for you would be to do the bottom layers first and then do top layers. One, because um, it helps you figure out where your floof needs to be as you come down with new layers. Um, but secondarily, um, it's a lot harder to work with these layers when you have to like come back and turn the visibility off and then do something and then turn the visibility back on and see if they're like colliding into each other. It could be a, it, it's a mess. <laughs> but we're going to do three layers here. We're going to do a bottom layer, a mid layer, and a top layer. And then we're going to do bangs. Um, so maybe four layers in total. And then that way we can have them all separated out. So for this back one, how would I want to do a back layer of hair? Well, this is where it's going to be the biggest, the widest, and the least twisty because it's like the heaviest section of hair. So let's set up our brush. I'm going to take my brush here and we're going to give it just a little bit of twist. And the twist placement is going to be closer to the bottom. Just the slightest bit of twist. It is going to be pretty wide um, and thickness doesn't matter as much because again it's in the back you don't see it and uh, it doesn't really matter it also needs to be pretty big to start with and then we can have it taper to a point so let's start here and see how this looks too much twist in my my opinion so we're going to undo that turn the twist down there we go yeah not enough twist <laughs> also let's set this to flat for now and I think we need to make this much wider because the point of this is we don't want a lot of processing power being used on hair that isn't really seen a lot. So you don't want to, you know, have 50 strands of hair in the back here just to cover up behind your head because then, you know, it's, it's using a lot of processing power for no reason. So if you can avoid that, there we go, that might be a little bit better. As a matter of fact, what we'll do is make this a bit sharper so it goes to a point later. There we go. Now that's giving a lot of coverage. We'll just do that again and again. And let's get just behind the ear and just behind the ear over here. So that covers the back of the head. Um, on second thought, let's do a little bit more twist. So we're going to undo that. I'm going to do one over here and one over here and then I'm going to do the twist negative 0.1 and then do every other one with a little bit of a negative twist to it. That way it looks a little different. Just like that. So now we've got the back of our hair covered. But this looks a little bit weird, doesn't it? Well, yep, we're going to have to do some finer touches. So now with the selection tool, we can take these and we can like slightly move them by moving their control points. As you drew the hair, it kind of made these little points here. And using that, we can just come along and tune this up and make it look a little bit better. Just like that. Now again, you're going to be seeing these from the back 
and these are going to get covered up eventually so these don't matter as much. I only made them as high up as I did so that whenever they add motion to it, um, they dangle from the right point. If I had only made the hair from here down, then whenever you're looking at it move, it would look like all of your hair that normally comes from the top all the way down is just connected to the nape of your neck and it just looks a little weird. So try to try to start them up here and as flat as you can against the head and then move them down. All right, this one also is clipping into the ear a little bit. So we're going to move that behind it like so. And there we go. We've got the basis for the back of our hair. So this, this is our first group. And now what I'm going to do is duplicate it. And we're going to rename this first one to bottom hair. Okay. This freehand group, uh, I guess it couldn't have, I didn't necessarily need to duplicate it. I just needed another one. You know, just for, for the purposes of teaching you, let's do add freehand. There we go. And now we've got a new freehand group. Um, selection. Make sure we've got the right material set. There it is again. That might help. Yeah, all of that is turned off. Okay, just making sure. And now what we're going to do is this mid layer. So like I said, I want it to be a little bit more twisty as we go along and not as wide. So what we're going to do is drop this width down a little bit. We're going to increase the twist. So before it was a 0.1 and now we're going to go all the way up to like a 0.3. And the twist is going to be down through the whole thing right now. Um, we can leave this as a bottom, no, as a triangle and you will still taper to a point but it's going to have a longer slope this time so now let's start up here and see how this looks okay but it needs to be a bit bigger otherwise we're going to have like 40 strands of hair going around here and it's just going to be way too much so let's start this a little bit wider and increase the width here and try again. There we go, yeah. Now it's only going to be like 10 of these. However, it looks like it's clipping into the pressed one. So what we're going to have to do is give a little bit more volume to the hair. Uh, before I change anything on here, you might want to do this um, cloning tool up here. So it does the same thing to both sides. And we're just going to pop this out just a little bit so that this layer of hair sits on top of the last layer of hair. And then we need to make sure it's closer to the skin up here because we're going to have to do the same for the next layer. It's okay if the top of the hair kind of clips into the head because you're not going to see it when the next layer goes on top of it. Let's get our brush back out and see. Oh, it looks like I did not move this far enough out. So you need to be far enough out that it sits over top of the last layer over here. There we go. Just like that. That's a bit better. Looks like that's still sticking out. And if you need to change the last one, you can always come back to that one and then move it in as well. So just like that. I can make sure that these strands of hair are staying inside the head and not causing me any problems like that. <laughs> it's pretty easy to change it. So now let's come back out here and try brushing again. And we'll do one in front of the ear. Hmm. Uh, it did not save any of my changes to the brush between strokes. Oh, and also because I have the cloning tool on, it did it for both sides, uh, which is fine if you want it to be symmetrical, but I don't necessarily like my hair symmetrical, so I'll turn that back off. Let's uh, come to the freehand group, hit our brush, and then let's turn that twist intensity up 
Let's make it a one. Let's just make it a solid one for the twist. Placement will be zero. We're gonna turn this up here and get rid of that dot. There we go. And now we got some twists to our hair. Just like that. It's, uh, it's gonna end up looking a lot like my hair. <laughs> I realize that now. But um, again, before what I did was go back and forth on the twist pace, um, intensity being between positive and negative. So knowing that I'm gonna have another one here that's the other way, I'm just gonna wait and do this. I'm going to come over here and do this and that and then you know we'll put you behind that ear now let's come back to our twist intensity and go negative one and we'll put you in front behind in between like that and there. So now we have the next layer of hair pretty much done. It's a little curly, but um, you would also notice that there's a lot of gap in here. A lot of this is exposed right now. So we need to do something to fix all of those little exposed bits. So let's take our brush and decrease this intensity back down to something like a uh, 0.5 and we're going to leave it pretty wide up until the end again and we're just going to cover up these spots that are exposed you know what that's not even wide enough yet so let's make it wider like that and you know what let's leave it as wide as possible in the middle here start it off wide um, if you ever need to delete a specific piece you can click on it here find out which one it is and then delete that if you ever need to twist intensity was there I should have left one as my my base brush but oh well <laughs> move that back down to really low really wide up there good oh yeah that'll cover up that spot maybe a bit too much we'll turn that back down there we go and then this way We've got the curls of our hair sticking out. You don't necessarily need the back covered up unless your character, if you're using this character in like a VR simulator or something like that, or a VR talk or VR chat, that's what it is. <laughs> VR simulator. Um, then you don't necessarily need to worry about the back. Um, just fix it to your needs, knowing that the more you add on, the more processing power it's going to take. But that looks pretty good to me. Um, so now let's move to the last layer, which is going to be the top of the head. So now let's add a freehand group. Uh, you know, let's let, rename this one to mid hair. Mid hair, okay. And then this one we can rename to top hair. And this one we're gonna basically start from here forward on the top of the head and we're gonna cover the back again and then the last section we'll do is the bangs up front so with this we'll grab our brush um, we're gonna leave it on this kind of thicker one and do that because I do like volume to my hair and let's see where we need to change things to make this look like it's actually in the hair let's get these lower Oh, I did the mid hair. Oops. Somehow I clicked on that top hair. There we go. Now, 
Now it's gonna fix that, okay. So now we'll leave you in there. Make sure that it's poofy enough that it covers up the starting points of the other hair. Um, if you went with a flat shape and you didn't have any poof, you don't have to worry about that as much. Um, but just because I wanted to show the more dynamic hair, I made sure oh, I did all of those edits while this wasn't on to make it bounce to the both sides. So if you're not doing poofy hair, that this is not going to be as difficult to do. Um, so you might want to start with that, but I do like me some poofy hair, so <laughs> you'll have to forgive me for wanting to show you how to do it. So now that we've got that in, let's get rid of this, well, here, we'll grab our brush and see how this looks whenever we're, we're minus on it. Okay, we need it to be a little bit further out so that it covers up that hair. this guy in the middle pretty low so that they start low and then it poofs out like that there we go all right now we'll take our brush and do some more you know what I'm fine with doing the clone tool on this one again doing it from the back there's there's not a whole lot you have to worry about there so now we've got that part of our hair covered Let's, uh, let's do this over here. Actually, hold on. All of that undo. I need it to be more forward. So I'm going to start up here. Click and drag and bring it all the way down like that. There we go. And that covers the back of our head. Now we can get these sides real fast, like that. And now we're good to move on to the bangs. And we're gonna basically just bring some twisty bangs down. So let's do one last free hand. Rename this bangs. Okay. Again, we need to change this mesh just a little bit to get it started. There we go. I'm going to leave it on diamond and this one I'm going to have start a little bit smaller and start tapering down a lot quicker. And then that way it makes it look like single strands of hair coming down. We're also going to need to cover that up, it looks like. Let's get our brush. Let's start up here and see how this looks. Oh, time to hydrate. <laughs> mm. We're just going to make... For the, the sake of time, I'm just going to make these bangs symmetrical because I'm already going a bit over on the time I wanted to spend pretty much in Vroid here. There we go. Alright, I click off of that and see how it looks. Innocent and unassuming. <laughs> now, I do have a little bit of this one sticking out over here. If you want to fix that, just come up to your selection tool and click on that strand and it should highlight it. All right, this one in particular is a problem, so I'm going to grab this control point and just move the top of this up so it's not hanging out. And there, that, that helps out a lot. So now that we've got the hair in the right shape, we can start worrying about the highlights and textures. Now, since we've used the same material for all of these, we can come up here to material and change this highlight color to something else, maybe. Let's see. If I wanted a stronger green, maybe, since maybe it's like reflecting my, uh, my skin, I could do that. 
maybe a yellow. The outline color I'm just going to put it black. I'm just going to leave that black there. And then the secondary material components we've got turned off. So we'll just leave that as is. If I also wanted to change the main color, I could. I want to leave it the same just because I've matched it to the bottom. But again, if you want to change that and then change to the bottom, you can. And the last thing we're going to do for hair, now that we know how to change all of these other parts to it, is to set it up for um, physics. Now, it's going to change what happens based off of what program you use for face rigging. I use VTuber Maker and um, all the physics that I get on my hair. I had to wait until I had the paid version of my account, otherwise it was just stiff and um, basically just a piece of plastic on my head. <laughs> So if you don't have the means to have physics on your hair, um, this doesn't really apply to you, but we will overwrite that, our overall hair. And I will show you how to apply physics to it. So you'll edit hair bounce. And the thing I would suggest to do is just auto generate bone group. Um, so what you're going to do is set the number of bone groups, which is how many individual physics objects you want. I'm going to just put this down to only like six. Front hair detail is up, and then we're just going to auto-generate bone groups. And we should have six bone groups now. So right now I have this group. They're color coordinated, so you can see the different ones that you've got. And it does it by strand. So I've got that strand, I've got this strand, and now we've got a whole bunch of options over here. It's not too bad, um, but what I do is usually just set all of one group to the same thing. You can individually set them, of course, but I just come up here to the bangs group. It's got one bone. If you increase the number of bones, then that's going to increase the amount of different um, sections for it, the number of joints on the hair. You don't need it to be too much. I wouldn't say you really need more than two, so I'll put it on two. Stiffness determines like how, I mean, obviously how stiff it is. Gravity is basically how weighty it is. So if you turn the gravity way down, then it'll move a lot more. Uh, the hit radius is basically how much it collides with other things. So I'm going to turn that up a little bit and fixed point determines how far back it considers its resting point. So if I move this really far back, it's going to make it seem like it's connected way back here. Whereas if you move it forward, it's going to make it seem like it's connected near the front. Um, we're going to use that a lot more later on when I show you something else. But for right now, let's just kind of leave it here. You know, what? I'll undo, undo that. So let's leave that as is. We've now generated this. You don't really need to do a whole lot. Once you've generated the bone groups, um, I feel like the default settings are pretty good on their own, but um, any fine tweaking you wanna do on that, just see what happens when you export it to your editor. And then if you don't like how some of the hair looks, you know to come back here and you can go, okay, well, my bangs like sit inside my head. If they, they get stuck in your head a lot, increase their hit radius so that they touch the skin sooner. Um, if they're moving around too much, increase their weight. Give them a little bit more, more heaviness to them. If you think they're too sprongy and bouncy, you can make them more stiff. And then if they don't seem to line up right, like they don't seem to be bending at the right point, then you probably need to just shift the fixed point up or down and you'll be a lot better off there. All right, so now that we've generated these bone groups, let's overwrite, drink some water while it does it. Delicious. And now let's do some of the weirder stuff for Vroid. And that is going to be to give our little dragon girl here some horns. How we're gonna do that is we need to go to a different hair group. Um, we're in overall hair. So everything, whenever we export this, is going to be in one group on the hair. Instead, we're going to go to Extensions, 
custom and create a new hairstyle here. Uh, yeah, let's save all of the other stuff that we did. So we've got this. We're going to go to edit hairstyle again. Click down here to freehand group. And we're going to add a new material. And this material we're going to rename to horns. So how are we going to do horns? First, let's get a more horn-like color here. I'm going to go to this yellow and get to this like desaturated brownish color like that. And then for the highlight, let's get a um, closer to whitish one like that. Still gray, but it's there. And again, I'll make the outline black so it just matches. Make sure our shaders are turned off, just like we've done every other time. And now we've got our horns. So how are we going to do horns? Hair always droops down, but horns usually come out or go up and over your head. So what we have to do is take all of these selections, and we'll use our clone tool here, and just flip them upside down like this. And basically turn that cage into a crown. You drop this cane. <laughs> There you go. And there we go. So let's make sure that it's pretty well rounded here. Obviously there's tons of different horn shapes you can do. There's a lot of things. Um, these ones I'm going to do similar to the one on the right side of my head, my blue one here. Um, it's going to be kind of spirally. Now the difficult part of using this inverted cage is if you try to click on something from the front, for some reason it thinks you're trying to, to click the back. So I find that I have to do things this way a lot. <laughs> We're gonna take our brush, and for this freehand group, I'm going to make that twist intensity pretty high. And we're going to have it start, oh, we're gonna have it start thick and then taper to a point. It's not going to curve too much. And then let's just see how that looks as is. Not bad. It's pretty twisty. And I think I should do it a little bit further down on the head. So let's undo that. Actually, you know what? We can, we can do the modifications as we go along. Let's show that. Let's put these here. There's our, there's our horns. And let's grab the selection and we can just change these control points like this. We'll put you down here like that. Let's push them out and then we can have them curl back in like that. There. So now we've got ourselves some little horns. We just had to use the hair editor. Now, if you noticed, my hair looks, or my horns that is, look completely different. It's because I put a, a texture on it and then I animated it, which we'll, we'll learn about here in just a little bit. But let's do something fancy with these horns. Um, let's go find ourselves a texture to add in here. So now that we've generated these, we can escape here. We will overwrite the extensions. And I want these horns to be plastered to my head basically, so I don't want to give them physics, so I'm not gonna edit hair bounce here. Um, if you do want your horns or whatever it is on your head, maybe you wanna, you wanna make a bug character and they've got like antenna or something, you could totally add some hair bounce to it and uh, maybe like an angler fish thing and have like a little lantern drooping down. You can totally do that. But for the purposes of these horns, I don't need them to bounce at all. Uh, instead, I will go back in here to the hairstyle and go to my material. And we will edit the texture. So what do I want to do with these horns? Well, I want them to be kind of um, telescopic looking. So what we'll do is come back over here, 
and I'll look for um, maybe scale. Scales? No, scales. <laughs> of course I got that. No, I'm still getting that. Um, how about um, dragon scales? Now, it's it's probably going to look weird. I want them to be big. Like, like this. This is what I'm looking for here. This kind of texture. I'm not sure what to call that. Oh, those look sick. Um... How about bone armor? Bone armor. Oh, high eyes. <laughs> Texture. Not boner. Oh my god. Bone armor. <laughs> oh yeah. This this is basically the thing that I want. It's just not texture enough. How about just bone texture? Maybe this will get it no. No. <laughs> Let's get rid of the PNG. This is part of the process. You're, you're gonna have to learn how this works. Okay, we're starting to get there a bit more. Oh, the antler kind of thing. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know what you would call it, though. Well, well, you know what? Let's just do horn texture. That might work. Something like this. Something like that, actually. You know what? Made it more difficult than it needed to be yet again. So let's grab this. I'll copy this image. And then what we'll do is come back to you. And we'll export our hair. And we'll just call this hair. Come back to GIMP, open up, hair, PNG, and then let's just paste this in. Oh, did I lose it? I might have lost it, or I didn't actually save it. Copy image, paste. There we go. So now what I can do is layer, transform, we're going to rotate like that. And then let's scale it up. So we can see up here this is 512 by 1024. So I'm going to just go height 1024. Enter and scale. That way it matches up with the length here. Looks like there's a little splash mark there, but from where all we've got all the twistiness to it, I think it'll look fine. So let's save as hair. Um, let's actually save this as horn. And then we'll export as horn. Perfect. We'll come back to Vroid, import horn. A little bit weird. Kind of looks like stone more than horn because of this. I like the, the grayish yellow color, so we're just going to do a little bit of color editing here. Hue saturation. All right, from where it's so gray, it doesn't actually have a lot of color to it. That's fine. Um, I guess we are going to learn a new tool then. Um, what we're going to do is make a new layer. Uh, actually. This might be a better way to do it. We'll colorize. Yeah. So with the colorize, you, it basically turns anything white um, into a color. So we're going to do that yellow color. We're going to turn the saturation down. We don't want it to be too yellow. Turn that lightness back up. You know what? Maybe... We're, we're doing dark blue hair and green. What if we did something something a little out there? What if we did red horns? Like that. You know, I don't actually have to have it be bone colored. Right? We're making fun characters here. Alright, we'll export that. And 
then import form. Oh yeah, why not? Now again, looks like we've got a highlight color on there. I'm going to turn that off. It makes it kind of seem more glossy than I want it to. Let's make sure we've, we've done that. And now we've got our spirally kind of horns. And that's how you do horns. You just make them out of hair, and then you change their texture. <laughs> so now we're going to exit out of here. Exit out of here, we will overwrite. And drink water while we do. Mm. And now you've got horns. Last thing we want to do is give our character wings. And this is going to be probably the most difficult thing that we're going to do today. So we're going to do extra. We're going to do custom. Add a custom hair. We're going to edit hairstyle. And for our freehand group, we're going to need another new material. And we're going to call this one wings. Wings, like that. There we go. And then we're going to need to edit this texture. And I'm not even going to bother exporting again on this one. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to over just completely overgo it. <laughs> Overlay it. And we're just going to do dragon wings PNG. Now this you might not want wings on your character or whatever, and I totally get that. But what this is going to show you is how to place things on different parts of the body than the head using hair. So if you look at my model right now, you see the, um, the earrings on my ears. Those are hair. The wings on my back, that's hair. All of that was done with hair in the Vroid system. So, oh, these look pretty nice. I think I'll go with these ones. Oh, look at all of these different wing styles. Isn't that cool? Um, again, I would not suggest in your final product, if you want to be a VTuber, to only have these. I ended up, I went with those for a while myself, but then the wings I have now, I basically just took a base and I colored over them and it, it was like a whole trial and error thing. Uh, this does not seem to be a PNG, but I will show you how to fix that. So we're going to copy that image, come over here, uh, we're going to make a new. Okay, and we're going to paste this in, and we're going to image, image, I want to scale to layer, where was that, fit canvas to layers, there we go, and this, this like black background layer, I don't want that, oh, and it was a PNG, so never mind, cancel, all right, before we do any of that, let's get rid of this background. Add alpha layer. There we go. Then we'll paste image, fit canvas to layers. There we go. And now we have our dragon wings. So let's file. Oh, I did not anchor that yet. Let's anchor it first. Perfect. And you know what? Let's crop it too. This is the, the crop so that we can get rid of all of this extra nonsense around here. We can just get it down to what we need. That's going to help out in the long run, so let's take care of that now. And then once you got the shape right, click in the middle. There you go. Alright, save. This is our wings. And then export as wings PNG. I'll give you guys a second. I don't know if you found the wings that you want um, or if you found the same wings, um, but basically you should have it like this. Um, have completely symmetrical wings on either side. It's very important. It looks like this one even is a little alpha out, but that might end up looking cool later on. Uh, a little point of advice with Vroid is that it does not actually do transparency very well in between being fully opaque or fully transparent. If you try to do partially transparent stuff, there's like a cutoff on the alpha 
where if um, it's a little bit too alpha then it'll be completely gone and if it's not alpha enough it's completely visible. I I'm not sure why they went that way but we can fix that in Unity and seeing the wings like this I think I'm going to be able to show you how to do it. And as a matter of fact I'm going to see if while you're still getting your wings together if I can just change the transparency of the entire layer. Um, tools. Ooh, colored alpha. So if I do colored alpha and I hit these wings here, oh yeah. Um, interesting. Yeah. Threshold like that. Capacity threshold like that. That makes them look really tattered and stuff. It's kind of cool be honest but um I just kind of wanted it a little bit less transparent so what we'll do instead is um change the opacity of the layer down in general and I'll have like some ghost wings that's fine I wanted it to just be the red part but that's going to require a lot of selection and stuff and I'm just giving people a little bit of time to find the wings they want and then crop them down and get in here um, if you only found like one wing, of course, you can just copy, paste it, horizontal flip, stick it next to it, do yourself some good that way. Um, let's export that again and save. And now let's head into Vroid. So we are going to import wings. And that is now the hair texture that we have. So let's exit out of here. Come into our freehand group. We've got wings selected. We're going to need to have this come way down. And let's make sure that we duplicate. And we're going to make it super wide. Why? Because the wings are going to be basically flat to our back. So we need it to be super wide. So again, we'll come out here like that. Like this. And you know what, we can bring bring more of this down so we have a bit better control when we do start doing things. And you should be making this sort of flat canvas shape for your wings, basically. Like this box. So let's make sure that it's pretty close to the back and wide enough that the wings have some span there. There we go. So once you've got a shape like this, then we can draw on the back here for our wings. So let's get our brush, and we're going to start with out duplicating it, because we're going to need to do these one at a time. I'm going to start here and see how the wing looks. Where is this drawing from? Now this looks really messed up, right? This looks nothing like a wing. I mean, I guess it kind of looks like a wing, but we're, we're clearly not getting this. And this is what I want. So how do we fix that? Well, I'm going to get this selection tool here. We're going to click on that and we can see the texture parameter. Well, the width, it makes it spread out. Oh, and you can see it's rotating around something. Well, that's because we don't have it flat. What we need to do is come down here and instead of diamond we want to do a flat so now that we've got that part done we now need to make sure that we've got a big enough width to do the whole texture because right now it's like six percent of the width of the picture so let's just click this and hit one hey there we go but oh no what else is going on here well we've got some thickness on a flat piece so let's get rid of that Hit that with a zero. Smoothness, get that down to a one. And hey, we're starting to get something that looks right, right? We also have all these control points. Oh no. I think we can do ourselves a favor here and uh, maybe brush this again, but without as many control points. So we're just gonna delete that all together. And on our brush, what we're gonna do is 
come down to smoothness and set that to one. And I believe with the one, that might be what we're looking for. So again, we'll set the width to one, the thickness to zero, no twist in here at all. We've got it set to flat. This, oh yeah, this, we're just going to leave at the very top. So it stays the right size the whole way across. Because we're just, we're just basically painting a picture on the back. And now let's see how this looks. All right, now we're not getting that scrunching, but things are still a little bit off. So we're gonna take our control point here. And now we still, we still have like a whole bunch of control points. Wait a second. Smoothness is not the control points anymore. Give me a second here. Cause that is doing something different than I wanted it to. Where are my control points? Just want a, like two control points. That's all we really need. Was it in here? It might have been. Bumpiness, no. There was an option to set the number of control points right on the brush in the previous version before I upgraded. No, delete that. Free handcraft. Give me a moment. It was fucking a little bit further down for some reason. Okay. Um, no, that's guide parameters. Wait. So position X, the offset. Where are my control point sets? You know what? It might be even further out. Okay, we're gonna overwrite that because we still have the texture in there. Sorry guys, give me just a minute. I've lost track of where my edit is. So in... It's still gonna be in here. It's not necessary, like we can do all the little changes for the, the wings. It just, it's a little bit of a pain and I wanted to reduce the amount of pain you would have to suffer by having to move each and every single one of those little dots. And I know there's a setting for it, but it was on the brush before and it seems like they've changed that in at least a recent update or the move to the stable version. So I guess we're just going to have to deal with that. So we'll go back to setting the width there, the thickness to zero. The diamond is now going to be flat. Our curves, we're uncurving you. Completely uncurved, you're uncurved. You're flat. Smoothness, zero. No twist, no thickness. And then we'll just do that. Look at our control points. for this group. Oh, you know what? That might be how you do it. Just here. I, I may have just figured it out. Brush. We're just going to quickly draw two little spots like that, make it super thin. And then your control points are probably just two little dots there. Hey, that's one way. We found a workaround on the fly. Don't worry about it. <laughs> So now if you just click and drag that, you can then set this out and then we can find the way that we need to get this wing to look right. So we want 
the bottom part. There we go. These are the bottom parts of the wing, but we don't have it looking exactly like a wing right now. It seems to be cut off at parts because it's doing the front and the back. So we just need to offset things until we get it to the right position, which would be, let's see, there we go. We got the width down, we got it right at one. So now that part's right. And this is where it should hook onto my back. So we'll go to the control points. There we go. Starting to scrunch, but we're also starting to get something that looks like a wing. All right, what, what we're gonna have to do is change this entire shape. We're gonna need to give ourselves some more space. So let's grab this our clone tool again just to make sure we get both sides right and let's stretch this all the way down so we can give ourselves enough play space for these wings there we go I'm a little bit bowed out there for sure you know what we we probably need it to be that far out so we can get the detail we're looking for that like that there we go now these wings are super big <laughs> um, you probably if you're intending to sit in front of a camera with your character uh, take it from me you do not want to have all of your camera space taken up by your wings so be mindful of how big you're actually making them um, and then let's again stretch out the top here There we go. Now we've got plenty of play space for this. Right there. All right, and with enough trial and error, we have finally made the first wing. Let's, uh, let's make sure we get it up against the back. So this node here. Let's smush them in. Smush it in. And we're also going to need to make this a little bit smaller. <laughs> I don't want it to be humongous wings whenever we finally do the, the finished import. So let's grab this. And let's do... Let's do a 0.5. There we go. That looks a little bit better to me. And then we'll once again wobble our way back over here. Hey, look at that. Looks pretty good to me. So we just basically... The, the major point you want to get across whenever you're making a super weird texture like this from hair is to come down here to width and start at a one so that you're using the exact same size as the base texture. One on width and texture parameters and one in width on hair parameters. And that'll give you a one to one on your texture to model ratio. Then everything else here is just going to come down to the finer tuning. Um, I only have two control points here for my hair, or well, it's wings, but for the hairbrush. Um, but if you gave it like two or three, you might be able to get a little bend out of it because you're going to apply some amount of physics to this. And then now that we've got this brush ready to go, we should be able to get something very similar very quickly over here. Oh, except I have it cloned again. Stop that. And then we can do that. And then we can pretty much just copy and paste the changes that we did on this other piece of hair here. So you, oh no, I've done it again. <laughs> oh no, I've done it again. Brush. This one, 
just do a clone of that, just like that. Control point, I should only have two for it. Perfect. However, oh no! Look at this! The fuck is happening here? Oh, we making wings, son. And ain't no buffalo wild wings either. We've got it upside down, so we're just gonna flip it around like this. And then, in our options, yeah, I'm just winging it, actually. In our options, what we're going to do is, for the texture, we're going to offset this again. Oh. Excuse you? I've got this one clicked correct. Yes, thank you. So you can, you can change this around, or... Set this to negative one. No, wait, it was the other way around. Uh, one. Sorry, sorry. Probably should have practiced this part before doing a class on it. Damn it. It's going to be some amount of flipping this around like that. <laughs> are you winging, son? Yes. <laughs> yes, we are. Um, the offset should have been in the other direction. Anyway, um, if I leave it like this though, we take the control point and we just flip it around. Like this, like that, and like that. There we go, and then we can put it back in pretty much the same position as we did the other one. If you want to do a lot more fine-tuning with yours, go ahead. But for the purposes of this class, I'm pretty much going to say that was designing the wings. All you gotta do, and I'm realizing now that these are completely transparent because of the problems I said with Vroid, but whatever. We'll, we'll move past it. <laughs> and again, it'll be fixed up somewhat in Unity whenever we do that. So we'll grab this. I'm gonna make this just a little bit wider and then push this in because the reason why this is sticking out from the body is that it's um, it's reaching this corner and trying to turn out. So let's grab our selection tool, freehand. Let's move these even further out like so. I am not cloned again, hit the clone. Move them even further out so they stay flat. There we go. Like that. And then I'll unclone and move this as far forward as I can. Like that. So there we go. Let's move these a little bit further down. All right, click off of this, and this is what it looks like from the front. Pretty nice, I'd say. Oh, time to hydrate again. Thank you, bunny. So let's exit out of here. We're going to be asked to overwrite. We will overwrite. Oh, that was a big pop. <laughs> and now let's do the hair bounce for the wings. Now, we don't want more than two bone groups because we just have these two pieces of hair. Auto-generate them. And you can see they, they're pointing in the wrong direction. Um, in order to do that, we're going to have to change some things in Unity. But what we can do here for right now is just adjust the stiffness and gravity of it. I'm going to add a little bit of weight to the wings. We're just going to make this a 0.1 like that. And then same thing over here for you. I'm going to make you a 0.1. And then for stiffness, I'm going to make that a 0.5. 
and that's because I don't want them to flap around a whole lot um, and also we don't need that many bones let's let's bring it down to two there we go and that should help a lot with giving it some nice movement now with all of the physics and stuff that we've done so far you can get a little bit of a preview of what that's going to be like um, also let's let's make sure we save this project so let's let's save as in the Vroid class um, I'm just gonna call this test dragon um, I'm really sorry if at some point in this class you you crashed a Vroid and you had to start all over or something because man that would probably be a pain in the butt um, the, the best part about that is most of the work gets done over here in GIMP, the like the heavy lifting, and then it's just a matter of importing it over there. Um, but obviously there still is a lot of things like the positioning of the wings and the horns and all of that. Um, once you've got those down, it just comes down to the finer tuning in GIMP, so... <laughs> Oh, sorry if that happened. Um, I should have been telling you to save all along because I should have been saving all along. So let's come over here to the photo booth. Um, we're not going to be doing a full photo shoot right now, but what we are going to do is add a little bit of wind. We're going to go to wind on the x-axis and we're going to quickly see. So we do have a little bit of shake here. Um, if I were to go back and do some finer detail work, I would make sure the horns aren't going pushing through the hair and stuff like that. Um, that's some stuff you can do whenever you're testing around. But notice, look at this. It seems like they're attached up here to my body instead of down here. Well, a lot of that has to do with how hair works. And hair always wants to try to attach the head. And so what we're going to have to do in Unity is tell it, no, 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 the wings aren't attached to the head. They're actually attached to the back. And that should help fix that up. So we can see at least that as far as, you know, the physics on it, the wings aren't going crazy. The hair seems to have a decent amount of flop to it. So I am okay with that. And at this point, I think we've discussed all the things I want to do as part of this Vroid editing. Of course, we're, we're, we're flying through this as fast as we can. We're, we're barely touching on each individual thing. Of course, there's so many sliders that you can hit. There's a lot of different things you could do as far as like textures on the body. I mean, just look at myself. I've got like um, two different kinds of horns. My hair is like got a whole bunch of curly cues to them. Um, my skin has scales all over it. There's so much you can do. You can even do multiple layers of clothes. So you can have like this top shirt. If I come back out here to the outfit, you can come over here to edit texture. And you can add a template here. And then you can add something else on top of it, like this hoodie. And then with this hoodie, you can come over here to the sliders and, uh, make sure that everything matches upright using all of the little different sliders there. And then I can have a, ta a tank top with a hoodie underneath if I so desired. Um, but I'm just going to instead invisible this. Uh, there we go with this little eyeball, get rid of it. And we're just gonna stick with this for now. Once you've gotten your, uh, we'll close that without saving. <laughs> Once you've gotten your character to this place where um, you, you like it and you're ready to export it, come up here to this little arrow and say export as VRM. It's going to take it a moment because it's, it's basically packaging everything that you've done into a single file um, instead of it spread out over, you know, the face, the eyes, the mouth, the cheeks. Um, the eyebrows, the irises, the sclera, um, then your whole body, all of the clothes, the hair. It's trying to put that all into one package. So give it a minute. It's, it's going to take its time. It hasn't frozen. At least, you know, it usually doesn't freeze. <laughs> Not at this part. I guess while we're doing this, while we're waiting, um, and while you're waiting, how many of you are following along right now? 
I know I only have a couple of lurkers at the moment, so if you are following along and doing your own Vroid, um, just give me a little thumbs up in chat or say, oi, yo, me, I am. Just let me know that you are, you're participating in this. You? All right. Anybody else? Well, this is, this may be a class for one then. Thought I got lost a while back. Oh no. Was I going too fast? I, I really should have been checking in with the class, shouldn't I? A little, but I got stuck trying to do a thing. Oh no. <laughs> was it was it like my shorts where I kind of got stuck working on the shorts for a bit when I probably shouldn't have even bothered with it? Because... <laughs> Because after I worked on that for like five minutes, I wanted to put a feather texture on some hair strands. Ah, yeah, I could see that causing problems. <laughs> it's probably very difficult to make that look right. Um, especially if it's like a single feather. If it's like a bunch of down, you might be able to make that work right. But man, that still sounds really difficult. Um... Well, knowing that, um, what I might tell you to do is similar to the wings and just find yourself a single picture of a feather and then you could probably go along your character in certain places and drop the feather down. Anyway, we now have the preview for our exporter. So we now have this. Um, if there was any kind of extra reduction you wanted to do for your character to make it a little bit more CPU, um, you know, friendly. Yeah, I was trying to find a good feather. Yeah, I bet that's probably super hard to do, especially in like PNG, something to easily bring over. Um, are you okay now? Should I give you another minute or two? It's okay? All right. So I don't really plan on changing a whole lot here. You know, 28,000 polygons seems like a lot, but if you knew what your average video game was running, it probably would blow that number out of the water. 17 materials, 107 bones, not bad at all. Yeah, you'll just have to work on it. Yeah, that's the point. Like, we're at the end of this. You're not going to have the Vroid of your dreams, but you should have the tools necessary in order to make the one of your dreams. Um, and so now we're just going to come down here and hit export. Title, uh, I'm going to call this uh, Dragonet uh, Creator is Eodidus. And um, you, can, you can fill out all this stuff. It'll keep it tracked inside the VRM just in case for any reason somebody else gets it. You can set a different license, all of that stuff. Um, I don't think that's very important right now. It might be, but I don't think so. And I'm just going to export that as the Dragonet VRM. And let that process. And there we go. And for now, we are pretty much done with everything we need Vroid for. We're now going to move into the Unity part. I get the idea, we'll just have to work on it. Yep. Alright, so now I'm going to minimize this. Um, we can minimize GIMP. And we can go to Unity. Open up your Unity Hub. There we go. So I've already got the thing that I use for exporting here, but if you're opening up Unity Hub for the first time, this should be completely blank. Um, what you're going to want to do is come up to New Project, and you're going to be given these templates, and you're going to want to choose the 3D Core Template. Come over here and name your project something like, um, I said VRM Exporter, but I'm just going to say Exporter this time so I don't, you know, get them mixed up. And then make sure you go to that project file. So I'm going to come back down here. To D, Yodidus, uh, Vroid class. And this is going to be the folder I will create this project for. And then click Create. And then it should get this started. And then Unity will pop open. And then we'll have our new project. Oh, I've been live for three hours. I need to drink some water. Oh, almost four hours. Wait, what? Oh, 39 seconds. I was like, wait, that's close to four hours.
Do, 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 do. Unity package manager, busy for several seconds here. I think that means our music stopped because it's been three hours. So um, we'll just click on another one of these Simpson lo-fi hip-hop mixes. Not sure what the Simpsons have to do with it, but that's how I recognize them. So I guess their branding works. <laughs> we can close out these. Minimize and go back to Unity. It is going to take a little while, especially since you're first opening it. And uh, you might go a little bit faster than me because it is pulling from a hard drive on my side and I'm streaming at the same time. So hopefully you get in there a little bit faster than me. And uh, in case anyone didn't get um, the, the downloads ahead of time, I'll go over to my Twitter and show you where these links are. Oh, this is scary. Oh, I Lottie is a post right here, so I can't I can't scroll. <laughs> That's a dangerous scroll there, Lottie. <laughs> you can't be the first thing on my homepage. That's too much. Um, so here we go. This is the the post I was talking about. Um, so these are the VR impact um, packets. Uh, let's see. You should get to this Uni VRM GitHub here. Scroll on down, and the two files we're going to need is Uni VRM um, 0.96.2 Unit Package. This one, <laughs> and then the Uni VRM samples. Same thing. Uh, download both of those, and then make sure you have them in an accessible folder. It is still importing. That is a long ways to go. I may just cancel this and open up the previous one since that is taking a lot of time. <laughs> uh, we're going to just close the window. Yeah, we're close, close that. Cl cl register scripts, busy. There, oh, is it actually done? Or did I cancel it and ruin everything? Uh, I may have ruined everything, but let's see. <laughs> so if you're in Unity, this should be the screen that you're looking at here. This is a fresh Unity project window. This is your viewfinder, very similar to VRM. You can, uh, you know, mouse three to pan around, mouse uh, right click to, to look like that, scroll in, scroll out with the wheel. And what we need to do is get the assets into this program in order to mon uh, manipulate our VRM. So what you need to do is come up to Assets, Import Package, Custom Package. Now all of my downloads end up in my Internet Downloads folder. And you should see these things in here. The one that I just told you to get, our 7 megabyte file, and our 35 kilobyte file. What you're going to want to do is do the bigger file first, the UniVRM, the one that doesn't say samples in it, and click that. And then it should pop up with a list of things that you want to bring into it as soon as it's done collecting the content. Oh, oh it popped up over on my other screen. Here we go. This right here, it's going to have all of these things to add into it. Just click import. Import that shit. Import that, you little bitch. <laughs> oh, my music on that import, too. You are a little bitch. <laughs> Doo -doo. Hey yo, how's it going, Vermeer? I am doing okay. We're in the middle of my class on how to make your own Vroid model. It's been a little rough. A little rough around the edges, but we are now at the three hour mark and we're doing a little bit of Unity editing. Uh, so I'm just showing people how to get the packets installed on Unity, and then I'm going to show how to import the, the model and then do a little bit of tweaking in here. Ready to pull up the seat? I think you're a little late 
class to get started from scratch on a, a fresh Vroid model, but um, obviously the, vo the VOD will be there for you if you want it. Oh man. Oh, it is having a rough time streaming and exporting this. I can see my uh, my OBS is losing it, isn't it? Yep. Hey, I'll take a one bitch here. <laughs> Thank you. All right, and then after it's done importing, you'll see this. Um, not sure exactly what that means, but just hit accept all. Do this thing again. <laughs> Man, the, the the import on Unity is really, really making OBS struggle right now. <laughs> there we go. Take your time. Take your time. That, that gives me a chance to drink some water. Mmm. Delicious. So, uh, what have you been up to today, Vermeer? What have you, what have you been doing? You having a good one yourself all right thank you and close and then we're basically gonna do the exact same thing with that other package I said uh, go to assets import package custom package and then do the one with samples import oh you vibing that's good we got chill vibes going on in here we got the lo-fi Simpsons hip-hop I don't know why it's the Simpsons but you know this person always has them on the background. So, you know, we'll we'll just take that because I, I like it. <laughs> I like their music. <laughs> Compile those C sharp scripts. You do it. Busy for 30 seconds. And then tomorrow, I, I'm gonna I'm obviously gonna post the VOD wholesale up on YouTube, but um, tomorrow the idea is I'm going to then do a video editing day where I take this whole class and I try to condense it down into a 30 minute video instead of a like four hour long one. <laughs> Always getting ready for my next stream. Oh yeah, there's no downtime. So now, after we've imported all of these things, you should notice that there's some new options up at the top. The only one that you really need to worry about here is VRM0. Click on that and we're going to import from VRM0 and we need to go to our project file. So let's go up there to my Vroid class and there we go, Dragonette. And now it's going to ask you a place to save this. So let's make sure that we put this in the Vroid class exporter assets. Just make sure it's left it in the same spot as the others. It should automatically do it, but um, just really make sure. Otherwise, your project will be super confused about where this asset is. So right now, it's basically converting that VRM into a more readable asset within the Unity space. Um, it's basically, you know, how we exported before it packed it all into one thing. Well, this is doing a little bit of unpacking on top of that. So now we have all these extra assets in here. You can see all of these different folders dealing with Dragonet. What we're going to do is take this cube, grab it and click it and bring it back out into this workspace. And now we can take a look at our little sample Vroid. Hey Dragonette, how are you doing? Probably rough since you're a very rough model right now. But we have things we need to do. The first thing I want to do is make sure that the wings are right. So just click on the wings and you'll see it takes you to the hair. Um, you can see that it's hair 001, merged, baked. It's got these roots and stuff all over the place. It's It's got this these shaders and stuff down here. So what we're going to do for this one Excuse me. Did I Oh, I went right past it. Our anchor right here. We don't want it on the head. See how it clipped on the head over here? What I want to do is set it to the spine. So our anchor override is now putting these wings on the spine and that way it should move better than it would have before because now instead of thinking it's connected up here to the top of the head, remember how we had it stretched up super tall? It thought, hey, I'm connected up to this thing, but now it's like, oh, I'm connected to this thing down here. 
Uh, also, this is how I would animate my horns. I don't think I've got a really good thing to animate here for the horns, but we'll, we'll do this anyway, just to show you how it's done. So right now I'm clicked on the texture for the horns up here. If I come down, you can see scroll X per second, scroll Y per second, and rotation value per second. So if I want to make the horns kind of move, I'm just going to go on that scroll per second and set it very low. What it's saying per second is, is how many times it scrolls the entire image per second. So if I set it to one, then that means every second the entire image would scroll from bottom to top. So I must have messed something up. Mine saved as .vroid and not D .vrm. Um, okay, back on this, when you hit export, let's see, let's back out of this just to make sure that I've got everything right, because you definitely need to do a VRM. We hit, yep, yeah, load, right here, export as VRM. Make sure to click on that. It's going to do that repackaging. Oh, that's the last of my water. Hopefully nobody tells me to hydrate, otherwise I'm gonna have to get up and go get some more water. Oh, I missed that, sorry. Okay, as long as that's all it was, I'm just gonna trace back through the steps and make sure we hit all the right points. Because otherwise, uploads of Vroid Hub is just gonna put that online, and there's some places that, that deal with that. All right, you go ahead and lurk. I hope uh, your stream preparations go well. And we will sit here and vibe. So again, once we get to this port, you should now, this port, this part, you should now have the options for reducing polygons and stuff. Hit that export, put in your title, your creator, all of that stuff. Uh, all of your things there. And then hit export. I'm not going to export again since I've already got it in there. And just tell me, Susan, whenever you get to that point, and then I'll pick up where I was in Unity. Okay? I know it's going to take a minute to export it. I'm assuming you only know that you did a .vroid instead of a .vrm because it did not import right, correct? Oh, the emotes just came in in the email. Yay. It didn't show up when I tried to import. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. It is looking specifically for a VRM file type. Where did I go? Uh, perspective? ISO? Thank you. With our weird pants. T posing to assert our dominance. Well, it exported. Alright, now I'll try to do that Unity import. Go up to VRM0 and see if you can do the import from VRM. Since you're the, the only student in the class right now, I will give you my undivided attention. <laughs> yes, it imported, okay. And then you should be able to drag your character out into the 3D space. And then once it's out there, you know, use your right click and zoom to get in close enough that you can click on things. And then you'll want to click on the wings. And then in the skinned mesh renderer, 
Under probes, you'll see anchor override and you'll want to set that from head to spine. And that should get your wings connected to the right spot. It's under root bone. Nope, I'm not touching that. <laughs> All right, did you find the, the wing anchor spot? Yeah, you can just continue on. I didn't manage to get the wings myself, was busy trying to make feathers. Okay, and then this is what we do for the horns. You come down here and you set the scaling. I'm going to set it to a 0 0.1, and then that way it takes 10 seconds for the whole thing to scale up. Um, from bottom to top, and that should make it take a long... You know what? Let's make it even smaller than that. How about 20 seconds to get it all the way from bottom to top? And then that does a little bit of fixing there. And then what I also wanted to do was give the wings more transparency, because again, the way V-Roy did it <clears throat> made it so that it was all or nothing. There's not like partial transparency. So how you fix that is you come in here, and where it says rendering type, you do transparent with z right, I believe. And now I've got these like holographic wings. Uh, or was it just regular? It was just regular transparent. I'm sorry. Regular transparent. Once you've got that selected, then any transparency you have on that um, particular piece will actually render with the correct transparency. Uh, Vroid exports everything in this little cutout rendering mode, um, probably to save on CPU or something like that for people, but if you actually have transparency you want to use, just set it to transparent. Um, that would also go for clothes and stuff. If you did like a see-through kind of coat or something really light, you could do that and uh, set the transparency there. It'd be hard to edit inside of Vroid because you couldn't really see what you're doing, but um, now we've got this. So what we need to do now is export. Um, oh, you know what? Um, just to show you how I did my hair as well, let's click on the hair. Um, we should be able to find that overall hair group. Oh, was it part of this? It was. Okay, so here's that. Um, I did the same thing as the horns with my hair to get those highlights to kind of droop down and do this thing where it like, you know, it glows and then the, the glowing comes down. Can I change the level of transparency in Unity? Uh, I would not be surprised if that's something you could do, but um, it's not something I'm familiar with. I would be doing all of that editing before um, exporting. Um, it would probably be super useful if you could, but I honestly don't know how you could set it even more opacity here. Um, shading to me, advanced settings. Yeah, that would, that would have to be something a little bit beyond me for the purpose of this class right now. Um, but anyway, back to the hair. Uh, I just did the same thing as the horn. I gave it a scroll Y, just set that really low so it takes its time, and then it makes the, the highlights kind of move and, and glow along with it. Um, of course, if there's any other textures you want to roll, um, I don't know how well it would actually work, but if you had some kind of like slime texture and you made like a slime girl, you might be able to have the whole skin move. Um, you, you would just have to come down here, select that, and then do the same kind of scrolling. But the fact that it goes over nails and um, the feet and stuff, I feel like it just never really works out that well. But if you're okay with it being a little more flat to make that work, then you can you can certainly do that. But after you've done all the tweaking that you want to do, the next thing you would do is export it again. So come up here, we're going to go to export VRM. Make sure that you have the VRM selected. So that's Dragonet because that's what I named it. So just click on that, click on Dragonet or whatever you named yours. And now you get all of these options over here. 
Uh, don't bother with any of that. The only thing you need to do is have a version in here. I don't know why, but you need a version. So I'm just going to put one and then export. Uh, we'll put it into the same folder over here and then hit export. Now, at this point, we check inside of our, our Vroid class folder. We have our exporter here. We now have our, um, for the moment, finished VRM. At this point, you would insert it into whatever um, face rigging software you're going to use. I use VTuber Maker. There's also a Magic Mirror, VSeer. So I'm going to quickly do the steps I go through to get this in. But uh, at this point, it's not really entirely applicable to um, whatever you're going to use. Uh, so I'm going to come up here and go to my library. I'm going to go to VTuber Editor because it needs to go through this before I put it into Maker. Um, I could have like opened up VC Face or uh, Magic Mirror for the purpose of this, but I, I know what works and so I'm going to try to uh, be Dragonette as the final part of this um, class. So my avatars, add a new avatar, upload VRM, we're going to go to uh, not my other one, we're going to go to our class folder, Yodidus, Vroid class, exporter, and get this one, and call that Dragonette. Give it a moment. Because again, we're doing this live, so it takes it a minute. Pulling things from a hard drive. There we go. There's a character we're going to upload. It's been successful. All right, we'll close out of that. And now let's pull me up here. Make me bigger. Make my monsters grow. And I'll open up not this, but this. So this is Oh, that just messed everything up, but whatever come over here to my avatars private and now I can take on the form of Dragonette hey look at me look at that look at my super transparent wings ooh definitely would want to work on that a little bit but it's interesting oh because of the the color all right, so here's here's a little here's a little trick for the kids out there. We do the uh, the uh, picture in picture, like that. Ah, and that gets around needing the chroma that out, right? So I can just move this off screen for the moment, <laughs> and then there we go. A, I can I can put this around here. So this is our our Vroid character. Watch, I can move my hair. I got floppy physics based hair. Look at those horns. They got a little bit of animation to them. I mean, the hair does too. The hair is, uh, you can see the highlights slowly drooping down. I like the ghostly wings. They're super ghosty. Now there's obviously still a hell of a lot of stuff that you would want to do to make this right. Um, uh, the, clearly the wings still need a little bit more work there there's everything's flat as far as the clothings go the skin goes all of that um, however that should be all of the tools you need in order to get what you want done all right let's go back over here to my previous model and we're back hey guys it's me again <laughs> I just shapeshifted a little bit it's okay don't worry Yay! Oh, I should give myself the keyboard back. I like my keyboard. Give me my keyboard. Ant farm keyboard. Ant farm keyboard. 
There we go. <laughs> and uh, let's reduce my size once more. Make my monster shrink! Shrink! And there we go. So now you know how to make a Vroid character um, and get a little bit technical with the Unity side of things, how to make different textures in GIMP. Um, hopefully yours turned out okay, Susan. I'm going to, uh, if you, well, you don't have a Twitter, so I don't think you can post it there. Well, you can post it in the Discord. Can you, uh, can you take a screen cap or, uh, do the, the snippet with the Windows Shift S and snippet your character from Vroid or from Unity so that we can take a look at it and see what you ended up with? Just post it in the lobby in, in my Discord. Please. Please and thank you. Thank you and please. And then we can show off your work and see what you got done. Sure, when I'm done messing with transparency, okay? <laughs> and, uh, let's see. I mean, the things I would want to do first is, like, fix a lot of this hair. The shape of the head looks really weird. Can you make hair transparent? Yes, you can. You would just have to make sure that the material in there had some amount of opacity. So, if I have it in GIMP, See how this horn here is um, like that? All I do is come over to, um, after I've made sure to drop it down to this layer. In this layer, set the opacity down. And then you could have some transparent hair like that. Now in Vroid, if you make it too transparent, it'll just be completely invisible to it. But then once you bring it over to Unity, you should be able to fix that up fine. So change the opacity and GIMP with the hair then. Yes. Um, then whenever it, um, then whenever you export it to Unity, just make sure to hit that little, um, toggle there from cutout to transparent. And then it would change the hair to a transparency. As a matter of fact, I might be able to do that. No, I would have to re-export the whole thing. And how do you re-import from Unity again? You don't. Unity is, is the last part. So you you would make all of your changes in Vroid and then export and then import into Unity to do your final touches. If after exporting from Vroid you notice something's wrong, you're basically going to have to tweak it inside of Vroid and then export it again and then do the same changes in Unity. There's no way to go from Unity back into Vroid. At least as far as I know. Um, I could try to load that up and see what happens, but I'm pretty sure it just kind of spits out some errors or crashes it. But let's find out! We're in class right now, so let's learn. Um, so let's save. And then we're going to go back to model selection. And let's go open. Uh, in the exporter and it doesn't even show up okay it doesn't it it's, doesn't pick it up as a, a VRM it would have to be a Vroid at that point so that's the problem there so never mind don't think you can actually do it that way but yes if you notice something is a little bit off after importing it into unity um, then you're, you're basically going to have to go through the whole export process once again. So let's, I guess while you're, I'm waiting to see your post, I'll try to make this hair transparent. And then if you're having any issues with it, you can follow along. So let's open our hair PNG. And we're just going to set this opacity down to 50. You know, how about, how about 69? Just because we're memeing it up right now. And we'll save that as hair and we'll export as hair it's just going to overwrite it that's fine export and then we're going to come back to vroid come in here and this is this is the fun stuff i like just messing around and going what happens if i do this what happens if i do this 
hairstyle overall hair this one edit hairstyle and then we're going to just click on any of these to bring up the material list come in here and edit texture and it might make everything invisible I don't know what that threshold is but we're just going to go import hair seems to have changed all of the color because I did not make it blue inside of there but that's fine we're, we're kind of already past the point where <laughs> it really matters what we're doing on that end um, I could have changed that you know what? let's just go ahead and do that hue saturation we're gonna make you blue super blue saturate that blue make it dark blue there we go we'll re-export that re-import that's how you deal with things not going your way is you just make it right. There you go. So notice it looks almost exactly the same, even though this is different. Um, it still saves these alpha channels in the, uh, in the files, which is how it ends up working in Unity. But Vroid will save it as a cutout, which doesn't actually keep the transparency showing, which is why we needed to go into Unity. because. Vroid is built on Unity, which is why it integrates with it, even though we have to do that extra asset. So we're going to do that. We're going to overwrite it. We're going to export again. Export as VRM. Mm -hmm. It's going to do that whole repackaging thing again. And then when I re-import it, I'm going to import it as version 2. That's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it Dragonet 2 or Dragonet V2, something like that, just to keep it separate, you know? over here VRM import version 2 save that version 2 into that file or folder that is now this one again we would have to completely redo all the things we did on the previous one so now we have Dragonet version 2. We can drop that into our little play space here, like this, and do all the same changes. We're going to click on the wings, come down to the wings, do transparent. We're going to anchor to spine. Then we can click on the horns of the hair. There we go. Horns, we would do the 0 0.05. And then for the hair, we should be able to do transparent. And then there we go. We've got some transparent hair. Because there's so many layers of it, it looks a little wonky, but that is proof of concept. You can make your hair transparent. And then I can do the, you know what, let's just make it crazy. Let's do a one there. It's already going to look really weird when we export this again, but we will. <laughs> All right, VRM. Export to VRM. Make sure we have the second one selected. Assets. Dragonet version 2. Oh, in the scene. There we go. Dragonet version 2, what's in the scene. You don't want to just re-export what's down there, just what you've, you've modified in there. And then this is version 2, export. 
And then we can do all the same things again. Get VTuber Editor open. Log in. Uh, new one. This is Dragonet version 2. Okay. And we'll see how this hair looks. I'm not going to bother with the doing the whole thing over again. I hurt you too. There we go. And that's what our transparent scrolling hair looks like. Not bad. Honestly kind of makes me want to do some transparency hair of my own. You could probably easily do a slime girl kind of thing like that too. Just make like one big like tentacle and then have like some kind of watery looking texture on it and then just have that moving downward slowly pretty cool uh, but yeah that's that's basically it back out exit I'm gonna delete this off of here remove version 4 I love you so much I can't get rid of you <laughs> you had such a comfy outfit and I think that's gonna wrap up our, our show for today I'm just waiting on that picture. <laughs> Let's close out of all of this stuff. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. We can discard all changes there. We can close out of here. Don't save. I can get rid of this. I guess I'll leave this saved on here. <laughs> Close out of you. Don't save. It doesn't matter. Close out of that project file. Close my notepad. Where, where are you at, Susan? Where's the picture? Come on. We all know it's not going to look that great. You don't have to worry about it looking bad. As long as it's not like, you know, lewd or something. <laughs> right? Come on. Everyone wants to see. Let's see. Close out of here. Close out of there. Get down to our bare bones. I messed it up and now the transparency I did have is gone. Oh no. Like it was too much transparency or it's completely opaque now? And are you talking about in Unity or in Vroid? Because again, Vroid won't show the transparency correctly. You have to get it all the way over to Unity before it starts showing, right? Which is a huge pain in the neck, I know. In Unity, is it completely transparent or completely opaque? Completely opaque again. Hmm. Oh here, just just give us a screen grab of a grab of what your character looks like. Just just do a little snippet so we can take a look at it, and then uh, then you can you can fiddle with it a little bit more. Everyone's waiting. Everyone just wants to see someone's work. You were the only one here from the start. <laughs> Oh, hey, look at that. Somebody that wants to be banned. Nice. I love it when people come in and they just want to be banned. <laughs> it's no problem. Oh, you know what? I probably 
could do something while I wait, and that is to switch over to it. Nope, it's already gone. I need to do... I'm, I'm gonna make that my, uh, my wall of memories for today, is Dragonette. So let's open up Editor again. We'll grab her face and, and do it that way. New avatar. It's in lobby? All right. Now that I'm in the middle of doing something. <laughs> okay. Hard to see, but you can kind of see the hair through the chest. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. We got ourselves some pointy ears. We got, oh, I see what you were trying to do there with the feathers on the hair then. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. Okay, yeah, and the, the body looks really glossy. You look like an ice elemental right now. But there you go. We've got edited textures. We got edited hair. If you're going to make that transparent, that sounds cool to me. Sounds good. It's a start. All right, and now let's take... Dragonette. We're going to zoom out. Her with her glowy hair. Like that. And then we'll go back into Gimp. So we can make our wall of memories with her. And then after that, I think I'm going to have to end stream and start uploading emotes and doing a bunch of other stuff. All right, let's post this in here. We're going to use our color select. It looks like we're getting way more than the wings selected there. So let's turn that threshold way down. We only want this color here. So back to the base image, select that. Much better. Delete. And then we can crop. There she goes. Look at her. So unassuming. So pure. So innocent. Nothing lewd. We now need to go to... I really need to make the wall of memories a, a held file over here. Wall of memories too. This is Dragonet. Yeah, there we go. All right, now we can come over to our wall of memories. I have no idea why I can get the body to work, but not the face. Not sure. Probably just gonna have to dig around with it for a bit. <laughs> what what's wrong with the uh with the face compared to the the body? Are you trying to make your face transparent? It's not transparent. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. You can't see the hair through it. Interesting. That's super interesting. Well, you should have all the tools available to you to figure it out. So I say good luck to you, sir, on your path to making a transparent character. Um... It may have something to do with the back of the head. We have something to do with the inside of the mouth too. Yes, that's true. You are going to have all of the little bits inside of your head that are going to be messing with the transparency. Um, also, I believe the back of the head is on the body, so it might have something to do with that too. Um, so keep that in mind. Let's head to the wall of memories. And we'll open up image. Add source, new source, Dragonet. Add that source right in there. There you are. I'm gonna make her smaller. Can't make the same mistake before where a wall of memories grew out of control. 
like that. Should I keep it in somewhat order? Maybe I should do that. And just kind of have it grow down and then up and like snake back and forth maybe. That might be the way to do it. All right, let's make sure we get all of these on the right level. Get on my level. There we go. <laughs> And we've got ourselves another memory to remember the day we did a class on how to make a Vroid similar to mine. But uh, obviously mine took like two whole months and community input and so much trial and error. It took forever. <laughs> so um, if you're a little upset um, at yours right now by the end of this video, don't worry. Um, I am on Eodidus version 6 right now. <laughs> So um, if we had like a time machine to go back to December when I first started uploading, you can see how basic my character is compared to now. And uh, hopefully you've learned a lot and it will serve you well in making your characters. So let's get ready to raid somebody else with a handful of lurkers I've got left over. You guys have been wonderful. Thank you for tuning in. I hope that didn't sound condescending in any way, but I do appreciate my lurkers. You guys are like the um, the rice to my curry. Cause you, you always need a little bit of rice to go with your curry. <laughs> you can't just have the curry. You gotta have some rice there too. <laughs> Let's see. Ah. Uh... Let's raid Estella. Let's get her numbers up there to match Kiana. We can't have her sitting down here at only two viewers when Kiana's got like 11. So we'll help pump her up there. So, um, just a reminder, until next time, take care of yourself and take care of those around you. Bye-bye, guys!